eat them alive swallows the words and on the far side of the ground the two blue banners says fairings flying hawks the hawks or the borough is eagle hawk and the mighty swallows the maroon and gold are the northern united side captain coached by big tony southcombe who had a short career with carlton and has been a big name in country football especially with bought up in the north central league and golden square in the bendigo league jeff fairing of course has great experience at geelong and st kilda and also had quite a stint at norwood in south australia Here's the Northern United side from the back line. Craig Neiman, Fife and Terry Demio. Halfbacks Leo Demio, Ludeman and Muir. Centres Evans, Mountjoy and Herrick. Half forwards Hogan, Ludeman and Holt. That's Dave Ludeman at centre half forward. Forwards are Scott Neiman, Ronnie Best and Lee. Rucks are Wharton and Sheldon, Rover Tricky with Southcombe and McGrath at the stage, we believe, on interchange. And there's quite a word that Leon Holt may line up at centre-half forward. We'll check on that when the sides line up. Eagle Hawk side in just a moment. John Forbes, a quick comment on how that Northern United side looks to you. It looks very good, Shane. This is the side that's absolutely dominated Bendigo football for almost two years. It failed in the preliminary final last year. They went out and recruited from the, that night, and they got the players that they required, the fast-running players. They brought experienced players into their lineup. the likes of Gary Evans from, from Eagle Hawk, a former Eagle Hawk player. They brought in uh, Mike Mick Hogan returned also, and Leon Holt, a very good recruiter, former Richmond under-19s player from Wedderburn. He hits hard, and I think he will line up at centre-half forward, Shane. I think uh, Northern United side, a tight defence with Peter Five, an ex-Carlton player, holding down the full-back position. Leo Demio, one of the uh, high, one of the award winners in the Bendigo League this year, right. on one half-back flank, and the Melbourne Reserves, former Melbourne Reserves player David Muir on the other. Muir, as viewers could look after number 36, when he gets hold of the ball, he'll kick it out of sight. He will be the man, I feel, will go on and mark Daryl Gilmore, because he's the man that stopped Frank Cogg on the Sandhurst runner last, uh, the last final. But David Muir, I think he will go on to Gilmore. OK, here's the Eagle Hawk side from the back line as the umpires arrive on the Queen Elizabeth Oval. And it is one sight to behold with the Bendigo Highland type band. Just to check those two umpires, here comes the Northern United side out onto the Queen Elizabeth Oval, led by Leo Demio and Terry Demio, the two Demio boys. One of their brothers tragically killed in a car accident at the beginning of the year. I'm sure they'll be playing for him this afternoon. There they there burst they through the banner. There's the United side onto the field. Umpires will check for you now. And they are Johnny Fletcher and Ron Threlfall. Here's the Borough side for the back line. Christy, Gilmore and Munro. Halfbacks Dole, McDougall and Cartledge. Centres Morrison, Everly and Kane. Half forwards McIver, Adlam and Rogerson. The forwards are Pierce, O'Connell and Brooks was named in the forward pocket. We believe Pangrazio will come into the pocket and Robbie White may go to the back pocket and Christian Brooks may go onto the bench. Rucks are Ferring and Steve McDougall, Danny Slow to the Rover, Baines and Smith missed out. So Pangrazio White are the two interchange in the 20. They will both line up in the 18, we believe, and Christian Brooks will go to the bench. Richard Jones, your thought on the borough side. Well, that's a very interesting move, uh, Shane. I always had a feeling that uh, Ronnie Pangrazio was too good a player to be out of the uh, 20, and uh, now we uh, understand from John's uh, sortie into the Eagle Hawk room that uh, Pangrazio will actually be on the field. I would expect uh, Ronnie to be on the centre line or in the forward line somewhere. Robbie White, as you say, probably in the back line. A very handy man, Robert White, has played a lot of big football with uh, Eagle Hawk before he went away to uh, Canberra, then uh, with Marupna also in the Goulburn Valley League. But it'll uh, be very interesting to see exactly how they line up. Greg Christie, the big uh, uh, Ruckman defender or Ruckman forward, uh, we understand will be on the bench with Paul Brooks, who I thought played a pretty fair game uh, last week in the preliminary final on the half-back line. So uh, with uh, the, the way that these uh, 20 have been shuffled about, it'll be interesting to see just how they do come out. Um, very important point, I thought, there with that big uh, Swallows banner. The number that was in the middle of the Swallows banner with the flying swallow, Sid Mather's fly, famous Eat em Alive Swallows, was number 14. And, of course, number 14 is Gary Mountjoy, one of the 1984 uh, Mickelson medal winners and a top player in this league for a long, long time. Richard and John, I'd like a comment from you. Number one, who will mark Ron Best? I believe it'll be Gary Adlam. And number two, if Gary Adlam does mark him, who will line up at centre-half forward for the Borough? I think they'll put Stephen McDougall at centre-half forward, Shane. He's a mobile player, and there was a big doubt cast on the pace of Ludeman, the Trevor Ludeman, the centre-half back of Northern United. If a fast mobile player such as McDougall was placed on him, and particularly the conditions today, I think uh, Eagle Hawk will have an avenue to goal. But the one I think Eagle Hawk will move will be Darrell Gilmore. He's the one I think won't line up at full forward. OK, I think we're about to see the uh, Eagle Hawk side emerge onto the Queen Elizabeth Oval. Uh, Richard, here's the Eagle Hawk side now. Let's Here they come. Uh, Jeff Ferring. 
Peter Rogers, Peter Rogers, Rogers on the jump, yes, Peter Rogers is taking his little boy out on the field. There That's goes Big Fairing, and my word, what a lot rests on his shoulder today. The big man, six foot six, 17 stone. Uh, I quite can't remember offhand what that converts to in metric, but uh, by geez, the size. Have a look at number 40. Hello, he, Richard. He can, kick the, uh, he can kick the ball half the length of this field, and uh, there'll be some fun and games, I would imagine, in the early few minutes of this match. Who do you think, John, will get on top in that rug deal between Wharton and Fairing? What a vital deal that is. A lot of uh, pundits around the ground believe that the whole game will hinge on just who does, Shane. Uh, Jeff Fairing, a tough player, a player of vast experience. I believe he will be too strong for Wharton overall. Wharton will have a run. I think Wharton early in the game will, uh, will match him, but I don't think he's got the stamina to last out uh, what uh, Fairing can produce because Fairing's a player of vast experience, as uh, your interview this morning uh, pointed out, and the one Alan did with him. He's played at Norwood, South Australia. He's played with St Kilda. He's played at Geelong. He's, he's a football, uh, he knows what football's all about. But Dave Wharton, Northern United's lead ruckman. If anything happens to David Wharton, Shane, I think Northern United could be in dire straits. Well, that's an interesting comment, John. And we're joined on 3CV and TVA football during the day by Richard Jones and John Forbes with their comments on this big Bendigo Football League Grand Final. I'll come back and get the selections in the game shortly. But now from the Queen Elizabeth Oval and this famous simulcast, let's take a break. With the umpires and Bill Bonney, Greg Hilson, Basil Ashman, Bernie Harrington and Gary Needham, the Bendigo board, backed by Trevor Lee, the ground manager. Either team standing either side of the famous Comet side, the major sponsor of the Bendigo Football League. Statewide Building Society have been 3CV's major sponsor through 1984, and they're bringing you the action live and exclusive on radio right through the afternoon. We're Fairing. very happy to have TV8 along with us. Jeff Fearing has won the toss. Richard, which way has he gone? He's gone down to the city end, uh, Shane. He's won the toss, straight up the hand went in the air, and uh, it looks like... Uh, Eagle Hawker kicking to the city end down there where the Comet sign is. Okay, I'd like a selection from you now, Richard, then I'll ask John and Alan Besley for their thoughts too, just briefly, who and why. I'm going for Northern United, Shane. I believe that they have uh, the best full forward in the business. They have a very sound uh, defence led by Peter Fife at uh, fullback with uh, Leo Demio, Trevor Ludeman and David Muir, the long-kicking, high-flying uh, man on the half-back line. Uh, Eagle Hawk aren't out of this game by a long way. A lot rests on the shoulders of Fairing. Gilmore and McDougall, perhaps it's also Danny Slater to name four, but uh, I'm going for United. John Forbes, I'd like your thoughts on the game now. I agree with Richard, uh, Shane. I believe that Northern United have dominated the competition all the years. I said in my earlier remarks. I think they've got the mobility required to win a flag. They've got the players that can be changed. They are a very interchangeable side. Uh, they can switch players around and get the maximum out of them. I think the half-back line of Northern United will dominate this game. The half-back line of Muir, particularly with Muir and Demio on the flanks, so I'm going for a Northern United win. John Forbes on this 3CV TV8 broadcast this afternoon. In fact, we're calling it a simulcast. It's a first for country, Victoria. Alan Besley from TV8, your thoughts on the game? Yes, Shane, well, I'm going for Northern United. As I pointed out over the week, they've been the most consistent side in the competition. Uh, they've got the uh, experience of a grand final lineup, which they have this afternoon. Only a couple of young boys playing their first ever grand final. A lot of the other boys in the lineup, uh, very experienced final footballers. And I'm going for Northern United to win the big one. But with the conditions they, the way they are, Shane, it's going to be a very tight match. Just notice, Shane, that uh, Gary Adlam has lined up on Ron Best. Well, we predicted that one. Ron Best at full forward for Northern United. United, the flag favourites, kicking to the Barnard Street end in this first quarter. There's hardly a whisper of breeze. In true Bendigo fashion, the clouds have broken. We've got blue sky and stand by. The Bendigo Football League Grand Final of 1984 is underway. And what a game it promises to be. Umpire's about to go in now and bounce the ball. Alan Besley and John Forbes are looking for changes in both sides. I'll come to them shortly. There's the first knock away, and United go forward quickly through Hogan. He goes toward half forward, but the Borough defender, Robbie O'Connell, gets it to Steve McDougall. And away goes McDougall. Good football. He kicks long toward the forward pocket. He was looking down there for Shane Dole, but it's a good mark to United in defence, taken by Peter Five. John Forbes, what have you spotted? Shane Dole is lined up at full forward for Eagle Hawk. Shane Dole at full forward for the Borough as the kick comes to the half-back flank on the grandstand side. And it's an Evans mark for the Northern United side. Steve McDougall on the mark as Evans kicks toward the wing position. Big pack flies. No one can take the mark. Both sides will be feeling each other out, I'd say, in the early stages of this match. Plenty of players around the ball there. Eventually it's been shoveled over as Andrew Everly gives the ball to the boundary umpire. Here comes the throw in now, true wing position, grandstand side, one minute of the Bendigo grand final underway, and here's the first feel out. 
between Big Fearing and Wharton. Wharton gave Fearing the best backhand you've ever seen, and it's a free kick out of 15 metre penalty to the big fellow. And the Eagle Hawk captain coach would nearly kick a goal from there if he got onto it. This time it's a sloppy old kick, dropping it full forward. Gilmore out pointed. He played behind Peter Fife on that occasion, and it's the experienced Fife to take the mark. He decides to go for a trot under plenty of Daryl Gilmore pressure. Drives towards centre half back. Here's a glorious mark taken for the Eagle Hawk side by McIver. Very improved young player this year is Robbie McIver. He'll look down here for Gilmore, who makes a good lead, but United come out in front again. And the mark's been taken from him by the big fellow down there in Ludeman. Ludeman's got the ball. He goes for a long kick, travels over the centre. Big pack flies. No one can take the mark. Ludeman goes in again for the United side. Leading in the race for the ball's Brett Shelton. He couldn't pick it up. It's on the ground. Stacks on the mill again. And we're going to see a ball up. And a little bit of a to-do out here. And Jeff Fearing's given uh, Leon Holt a nice one. And Evans is after Fearing. And uh, Evans has knocked Fearing down. Rogerson goes in. And it's on for Young and Old. And Richard, I think we felt this would happen. Indeed we did. Uh, Gary Evans came running in uh, 25 metres to... to uh, to a deck fairing fairings looking for a bit more action but uh, johnny fletcher's in the middle of them sorting them out we th thought this would be on but uh, we didn't think it would be evans that put fairing down well evans not fairing to the floor and what have we seen we've seen a fairing free kick for the borough john i'll get your comments on it in just a moment it's reminiscent of 1983 and here's a nasty one it could have been a united free kick going the way of fife instead it's an eagle hawk player who's going to come out with the ball and it could be darby munro down there in the forward line position for the borough he takes the ball now, Munro goes for home at the city end, and there's the first of the day. Johnny Forbes, one year ago today, we saw a nice big Barney at the start of the 83 grand final. I think today's was a better one. I think it was, Shona, but it came from the most unexpected quarters because it was believed that Fairing would be the one that uh, handing out. I think Richard used the term, he was the hit -y, not the hit -er. Right, uh, Gary Evans did come running in, uh, quite a good, uh, and a good spring on him too, Shane. He, uh, he got up fairly high. <laughs> He had to leave high to get him, Richard. He did indeed. But it was right in front of the umpires, and uh, the umpires right under it, and a big kick uh, by Ferring put him into attack, and that was a resultant goal. There's the bounce. Wharton gets it down in the direction here now of Scott Neiman, who kicks toward half forward. Out comes Ron Best to get his first touch of the day. He picks up and drives toward full forward, but this time it's a borough mark in defence, and the experienced Robbie White takes it down there in the defensive lines for Eagle Hawk. They're wearing the two blue panels. Northern United Maroon with a gold B, playing in their first ever Major League Grand Final as Tricky marks after that kick and drives to full forward. And we've got a mark here for Northern United taken by Lee. He's in the forward pocket. He's kicking to the Barnard Street end. He's about 35 metres out, and he's on a 45-degree angle. Let's take a look at Rod Lee now. Shouldn't be too difficult to kick. Eagle Hawk have got the first goal of the day. Northern United yet to score. Here's the flag favourite's first shot. It's going to hold up in the breeze. Drops in the goal square. Punched off hands, one point only. And John Forbes, I thought, a disappointing kick for the distance he was at. Certainly was, Shane. I thought Rod Lee uh, would put a bit more effort behind that. But he's a former Calaval player in his first season in Benio League football. Here comes the kick out now. Gary Adlam playing on Ron Best as we expected. Long kick to uses the breeze. But there's the dual Mickelson medal winner in uh, Gary Mountjoy taking the mark. Just forward of centre for Northern United. And he's going to drive the Swallows back into attack again. There's the drop punt, looking for Best. Out come the Eagle Hawk defenders. And they've got the mark this time out in front of Ron Best. A good steady mark taken on that occasion for them. As they drive the ball through Pierce up toward the centre of the ground. In goes Hogan for United. He fires the hand pass across field, looking in the direction of Trevor Ludeman. Up by a set of might have been a throw that time. And it's going to be the captain of the borough, Rogerson, who carried his young son out to the field with him here this afternoon to take that free kick. He drives toward half forward, and it's Pangrazio chipping in to take the good mark. And he's away quickly. And a right foot drop punt toward full forward. Gilmore's up. So too for United was Leo Demio. And Leo Demio is going to take the mark for the Swallows side. And he's away quickly as Leo. Been a good fast moving opening. He looks wide. Oh, Pangrazio got up high and came down very heavily indeed. Race for the ball on the half forward flank now on the outer side. United leading the race out there through Craig Neiman. He eventually tries to bring it away. Couldn't do so under plenty of pressure. And it's over the boundary line for a throw in a half forward flank outer side. One knockout each to Ferring and Wharton. Three free kicks to the borough. None to United as yet. And that tab down goes in the direction now of Brett Shelton, half-back flank. He hand passes inboard to Tricky, and Tricky goes along with the torpedo toward the outer wing position. Gary Mountjoy does the spalling. It comes to the ground now where Mick Herrick had a chance. He couldn't pick up. Eagle Hawk clear away on this occasion through Rogerson, but only as far as Northern United, and they've got the ball on the half-back flank out of side of the ground. 
been a fast moving opening as Sheldon goes for a long bomb torpedo up there towards centre half forward. Comes to the ground. Tricky looks clever. Goes in. Gets a nudge in the back. No free kick. Shovels it out now in the Evans direction. He gets it further afield now looking here for Scott Neiman. But it's Eagle Hawk coming in again. A little bit surer in their ball handling in the early parts of this game. But that kick by Robbie White was poorly placed. And it's an Eagle Hawk uh, Loss of possession here as United bring it from the wing and toward the centre and the mark's been taken by Gary Evans. Just forward of the centre, Ron Best leads, the pass is a poor one. Best got a nudge, Johnny Fletcher says no. Free kick to Robbie O'Connell. In fact, he got the mark anyway and decides to drive toward the halfback flank and here's a great mark by Evans over Evely. He's the player who could list Northern United as he drives long toward full forward, bounces past all players, goal! And that was an amazing situation. Let's see what the umpires have said here, Richard. I think it's Leon Holt has grabbed it. Uh, no, he's bringing the kick back here. And it's going to uh, Ronnie Best, uh, uh, Shane. Uh, what happened was that as the Evans kick flew forwards, uh, it was grabbed in the goal square by Holt. And uh, it appeared that uh, Holt was clear. Swung around in his right foot, dobbed it through. But uh, Fletcher says no. Umpire Fletcher says no. Back to Ronnie Best. Ron Best coming in on a very acute angle, about 30 metres from goal. Drops it on his foot, it looks across goal. Well, a bad kick by Ron Best. A, a shocker. Johnny, that's very unlike Ron. Certainly is, Sean. I think Northern United are a bit unlucky then because I thought they could have paid that goal because uh, Holt popped it through, as Richard said, but the resultant free kick was given away by Gary Adlam, who gave one uh, best one behind the ear just to uh, warm his day up. Well, there's the throw in now. Half forward flank out of sight of Queen Elizabeth Oval. We've got now for three minutes of the opening quarter. In fact, a little bit further. Five minutes now to the opening quarter. And it's one goal to Borough, one point Northern United. Eagle Hawk moving the ball down the ground quickly, but United defenders come out again and kick toward that outer side wing position. Eagle Hawk in the van here now. Pierce tries to get the hand pass across. Can't do so. Chance now for Northern United. Well played, Brett Sheldon. Doing well early, that player, as he drives toward the half-forward flank. Ball's on the ground. No one can pick it up at this stage, but the Borough come in with sure ball handling again. And they're doing it well down there. That kick smothered on that occasion. Going in now is Andrew McDougall. Gets a sharp, no free kick. Yes, it will come now. And the Borough are going to take the free. Statewide Building Society scoreboard. Eagle Hawk one goal, United one behind as Darby Munro finds Morrison at centre half back. He gets the hand pass to O'Connell and the Borough Machines in action. He gets it on to Everly and Everly goes long looking for Gilmore. Gilmore's in front, can't take it, danger at the back. Slater runs into the open goal and it's home. Danny Slater has got the first of the day for him, the second of the day for the Borough and they've gone to two straight. Northern United one behind one point and John Forbes, he read that beautifully. Danny Slater's a great reader of the play, Shane. He's a, a very dangerous player. Today is tailor-made for, for Danny Slater to cut loose, and that's an example of what he can produce. We're going to see a few of them before the day's out, but he's a man Northern United must mark very quickly. Eagle Hawks half back line right on top, Richard, and they're cutting out any supply to best at the moment. My word, indeed, they are, Shane. Uh, Ninger O'Connell, of course, this is what Tony didn't want it to happen. Uh, Tony Southcombe, he would have preferred to have had uh, O'Connell at fullback on best, but there's uh, O'Connell who started that move off too evenly and down to Slater. Well, here's the big ruck deal again. Ferring versus Wharton. Wharton wins this one. On it goes to Sheldon. Sheldon across field now, and United go forward through Herrick. He drives further afield toward Ludeman. Best waiting at the back. Comes in and executes a nice tackle on Robbie White, but he gets it away to O'Connell. O'Connell goes to Andrew McDougall, who runs the ball onto Everly, and the Borough are doing it well early as Everly goes toward the half forward line. Now it's an open forward line down there, but the players from behind as McDougall comes in, so does Pangrazio. Oh, Leo Demio has <laughs> given away the most glorious throw you've ever seen. Would have put a basketballer proud as McDougall takes the free kick and finds Slater. And Slater looks dangerous early down there in the forward pocket position, City End grandstand side. And let's paint the picture of the QEO. He's 45 metres from goal on about a 60 degree angle. Danny Slater knows where those goals are. Good kick. Going to drop down there on the goal line area. Across hands and one point only. Alan Bessel, your thoughts on the opening of this terrific grand final? Well, Shane, it's been a very bright opening. Many people, everyone said during the week that uh, Northern United would really take the game right away from Eagle Hawk, but it's certainly turning out the reverse in the first five minutes. Statewide Building Society score check. The Borough 2 1 13. Northern United one point. We've gone 10 minutes of the opening quarter, and the mark's been taken after the kick out. 
by Ludeman. He goes toward the centre of the ground. Mountjoy beaten this time by Andrew McDougall, who drives toward half forward. Shane Dole had the show, couldn't pick it up. It's on the outer half forward flank. Oh, nasty one there. Oh, it's on again, thank you. As that United player went down in a screaming heap, but they're not as keen this time, Richard, to get involved. No, they are not. Uh, seems to be uh, Shane Dole won't mind a little bit of uh, action early in the piece, or at any stage of the game for that matter. But uh, Eagle Hawk have come out of it with a free. Shane McDougall. There's the kick looking down here for Slater again. He's got it. And he is running his opponent, Demio, down there. A merry dance. You might give it away if he's not careful, but Slater uh, has got the mark. Board pocket on the outer side of the city end this time. He's about 45 metres from goal once again. He's on about that same 60 degree angle. Umpire said you played on Danny Slater. He goes for home down there at the city end, but it's a poor kick offline and one point only. Statewide Building Society scoreboard, 2-2 to one point, and Johnny Slater is one man who's going to have to be marked. Terry Demio certainly won't be the man to do it, Shane. He's leading him a merry dance. I think he's got about three kicks in the last five minutes, and he's been very unlucky not to score three goals instead of just the one that he has got. Here comes the kick out now by Fife. He elects to go to the outer side. Good mark taken out there. And it's Rod Lee, the ex caliber player, who's got the ball. Halfback flank outer side of QEO. He elects on the short pass, and he's found his teammate there in Demio. Might be David Muir over there. I'll just check on that for you. I think it's uh, Demio. Goes toward the outer wing position. Rogerson playing in front. Taps the ball to the ground. Stacks on the mill develop. No one can pick it up over there. Outer side wing position. Herrick's in there for the United side. Umpire eventually says, give it to me. And I'm going to ball up. Well, it's been a good opening to the Bendigo Football League Grand Final. Plenty of excitement. Nice big blue. Couple of good marks. Couple of lovely goals. And United have taken the early ascendancy as Mountjoy roves the ball and goes toward the half-forward flank. It's tapped down to where Tricky gets one too high. And Darren Tricky must surely take the free kick. He might give it away. He's uh, pushed his borough opponent over, but he's eventually got possession of the ball. Too far out to score, about 75, 80 metres from goal. Looks for Ron Best. Two out duel. Best versus Adlam. Adlam punches to the ground. Best hasn't been sighted early. Hack develops again. And we're going to see a ball up at the true full forward position. Darren Tricky doing well early, Richard. Very well. I was just uh, thinking that as you were commenting on that. I think Darren Tricky's been United's best player. He's been in everything, Shane. 2-2 two, two to one point. Tap down Shark Will by Steve McDougall. He goes wide. All United. Mountjoy playing a kick behind the play and doing it well. Decides to go inboard. Robert O'Connell punches away. Evely gathers the crumbs, but Evans is there quickly too. And it's a good deal developing here now as the ball's hand passed out to nobody. Shark by Brett Shelton. He puts it high. Up goes the pack. Eaglehawk drop what they should have taken through Steve McDougall. It comes to the ground. McDougall's still in there. He's been a good player, really. Angry pack develops again. An umpire uh, thrillful this time says, give it to me. And I'm going to ball up about 30 metres out from the United goal. Here's the bounce down now. Up they go. Adlam decides to take it against Ludeman. Comes to the ground. No one can pick up. And it could be another uh, ball up here. Johnny Forbes quickly. Darrell Gilmore back at full forward for Eaglehawk. Good move, John. I think it is, Sean. I think the uh, opening burst uh, upset the Northern United defences and they've got the th their two goals on the board to Northern United, one point. There's the bounce. Up they go. Beautiful tap down to Tricky here. He's dispossessed, gets it to Mountjoy. Mountjoy snap for goal, rolls toward the boundary line and it's gone over for a throw in at the Barnard Street end of uh, the Queen Elizabeth Oval. This is a magnificent crowd. Three kicks, eight to Eagle Hawk, two to Northern United. So that's a good start for the Borough. And the tap out situation, four to Jeff Ferring and five to Dave Wharton. Brendan Cormack, wait for age from 3CV, heading to Perth soon to take up a great race calling career, is our statistician here this afternoon, as the ball comes to the ground after the throw in, and we're going to see it shoveled toward the boundary line again. Well, Jamesy, what do you think about the game that's developing in this first half of the first quarter? Very entertaining, Shane, uh, being the great, as you said, uh, had everything, a few, couple of nice little blues, a uh, couple of good goals, a uh, couple of good marks, and the old Gary Evans springing six feet off the ground to deliver a nice one. <laughs> I don't think anyone will ever forget that at the QEA for a long time as it shoveled toward the boundary line again. Up by us, says the Eagle Hawk player, put up his elbow, didn't quite agree. Free kick goes here to Scott Neiman. He puts it high, best goes up. He's outgunned again, comes to Mountjoy. He couldn't get the run of the ball on that occasion. Might be penalised for holding it too long. Eventually, Best picks up. He can't do too much. Goes to Scott Neiman, who's under pressure, and he kicks it through for one point. And Alan Besley, it's very noticeable that every time United go forward, they're under plenty of pressure. That's the thing that's really stopping them at the moment because I don't think the younger players are handling the pressure in this great grand final at the QEO. Statewide Building Society scoreboard. 2-2-14, Eagle Hawk. Northern United yet to score. There's a glorious kick out by Gary Adlam. Went every bit of 75 metres to the outer side wing position where Hogan goes in. He gets a good hand pass across to Herrick. 
They'll look for best again. Two out this time for the first time all day. Adlam wins again. Punches away. Where are the crumb gatherers? In go the borough this time, leading in the race for the ball. Well played, Morrison, as he'll drive forward to Mountjoy, picking up a ton of kicks. Playing that kick behind the players, got it again. He goes inboard now and finds Rod Lee. Rod Lee's got time. Wasn't shepherded for, but breaks away. Can nearly go for home at the Barnard Street end, but there's the big fellow lurking down the goal line, Jeff Bering, to take the good mark. Well, it's been a good duel early between Ferring and Wharton. And there's a beautiful kick from Ferring toward that outer side halfback flank. Ball's punched away there by McIver. Comes to the ground. No one can pick it up. Mountjoy's in there for United. Umpire spotted a free kick on this occasion. And we're going to go uh, the way of the borough this time. And it looks like it could be uh, Brendan Kane out there on the outer side wing position. Kane goes toward the half forward flank now. United with the chance here as they race in for the ball through Trevor Ludeman. He overruns it. In there too is big Dave Wharton. Stacks on the mill, comes into the open. Hogan was about to go, but the umpire has given a free kick in the meantime. And we're going to see it go the way of United. And it's uh, United in position now through Demio out there on that half-back flank out of the side. In fact, it was Ludeman. He goes out there looking for Sheldon. Oh, good mark, Sheldon. That was a nice mark from Sheldon. Just forward of centre wing position. He goes in board now. That's where you score goals at the QEO. And Everly had to sit over Tricky. And Everly's taken a lovely mark. And I think Alan Besley's comment was spot on. But a few of these young United players don't know what struck them in the early stages of this grand final. They're certainly the more inexperienced side. Never played in a major league grand final before. And there would easily be a 10 or 12,000 dollar gate here at the QEO for what's shaping up to be a pretty exciting grand final. Eagle Hawk bringing the ball forward. Got the chance now through Robbie White. He's a good experienced player. Pangrazio goes in now for the Borough. Umpire says against you, Northern United. Pangrazio is the only player going for the ball. And it's been a pretty sick opening for Terry Demio. He can't do a thing right. He's given away 15 metres now. And Pangrazio is almost close enough to score. He's 55 metres from goal, 45 degree angle to the city end. It's a right foot drop punt. Gilmore and Wharton in that pack, off hands and one point. And the civil cars coming to you through TV8 and 3CV. And there's the kick out now. Goes toward the half back flank on the outer side. Demio's taken the mark. He goes in board, but it's a poorly placed kick, and the Borough have got the mark out there through Kane. And Kane's going to go long toward the forward area. Slater goes in hard. He's been a desperate player earlier as Danny Slater. Shane Dole was in there too for the Borough. But we're going to see a United free kick to Terry Demio. Demio's got the ball. Halfback flank out of sight of the ground. He puts a long kick up there looking for Ludeman. Holt went up high. No one could take the mark. It's on the ground. Oh, and the United player got one fairly high there. Let's see who's getting up. It might be Mick Hogan there. Got a nasty one to the face. And he's going to take the free kick out of side wing position. So it's Hogan with the ball for the uh, Northern United side. He drives in board looking for Holt who got up and took a glorious grab. Had the chance to give the hand pass to the running Evans. Decided to go back and take the kick instead. Looks down here now for Ludeman. Ludeman will be paid this mark. Got out in front of his Eagle Hawk opponent that time. And it's David Ludeman now just too far out to score. He's waiting for a best lead. Instead decides to put it short. Chance now for Neiman for United. He's got the ball, forward pocket position, hand passes in board to the dangerous Evans. He's got pace, they're going around in circles at the moment. Puts it into the goal square, Ferring over the top of Best. And a great mark, Johnny, that one from Ferring. The Eagle Hawks keep a leading by example and he flew high over Ron Best. And Ron Best is under tremendous pressure in that uh, spearhead position, Shane. There's the kick now from Ferring. Goes toward the half-back line for Eagle Hawk. A pack develops again, up by is going to call for a ball up. And at the moment, Richard, Northern United's football is stop start. Eagle Hawk has a bit more flow. Certainly has, uh, Shane. And I think one of the important points about this uh, back line at the moment is Robbie White, number two. He's been doing very well up in that back line, getting the ball away a lot. There's the bounce now. Comes down to Mountjoy. But might a dollar for every kick he's had this quarter as he drives here towards Scott Neiman. And Scott Neiman's taken a good mark at the true centre-half forward position. Andrew McDougall takes the mark. As Scott Neiman goes toward Best, he couldn't get his hands to the ball again, comes to the ground, Lee, Lee drives to the goal square area, but it's all the borough again, and Robbie White's got that mark in the true fullback position. He decides to go short, danger, gutsy Mark Pierce, running the way of the ball, had Evans bearing down, but Pierce has got the grab, and Pierce has got it now, half-back flank on the grandstand side, drives around toward the wing, Pangrazio out in front this time of Craig Neiman. And Pangrazio's got the mark in position. So it's now Pangrazio deciding to go long toward half forward. It's a nice open Eagle Hawk forward line at the moment. Had the chance that time as Cartledge went up. He got the ball now and drove it toward full forward. Fife and Gilmore and Fife's too good. He used his body well and took the mark. 
He looks now for Leo Demio, who goes up in a solid pack. Couldn't take the mark on that occasion. Came to the ground where Sheldon goes in. Wharton doing some tough shepherding there. It's ooh, nasty play here as they're going in very hard indeed. Eventually Evans goes in and gets that hard ball and drives to the wing. Andrew McDougall misses what he should have taken. Oh, there's a Borough player. Nearly had his head taken off in Pierce. And he's going to take the free kick on the wing position. He is with the ball go. now. And he might be limping there, Jones. He came down pretty hard. Neil is also limping for Northern United up the other end. Change to that makes it about square. Statewide Building Society scoreboard. Eagle Hawk 2 3 15. Northern United 2 behinds 2 points. Eagle Hawk have got the ball at set a half forward, but United bring it away. Trevor Ludeman well played. He looks wide down here for Lee, who goes over the top of White. Couldn't take the mark. Herrick follows up for United. He couldn't take it either. And let's uh, check the free kick tally. It's Eagle Hawk 12. Northern United 6, and in the ruck duels, Wharton 5, Ferring 4. So certainly the Borough have had the better of the umpiring decisions in the early part of this Bendigo Football League Grand Final. Tap down goes towards Shelton. Pierce coming from the ground here. And it looks like the big fellow Brooks who's going to go on. He's already made back flanker, so there's no problems there. We've got a free kick up here on the half-back line, which is going to be relayed down the ground and go the way of Rogerson, the captain of the uh, Eagle Hawk side. He puts a beautiful drop punt toward Gilmore, who nudges out five. Or oh, nearly took the mark one hand, couldn't hold on to it. It's on between Wharton and Gilmore. It's going to be a big against Big Dave. He's given out a couple of backhanders, and it's pretty willing, Richard. My word, it is. Uh, I thought uh, Fifey was uh, pretty unlucky not to get a free kick there, and he's given Gilmore the free. Well, Wharton, uh, Wharton uh, looked like it, uh, he might have been the man involved in that melee. Pfeiffer didn't get a free kick as uh, Gilmore seemed to nudge him out, and now Gilmore's come out with the free. Well, it was certainly against Wharton, John. Fife did a remarkable job to recover his balance and get the ball, Shane, and, uh, in the first place. Now Gilmore coming in for a goal, the uh, city end goal, drops it onto his boot, 45 metres out, and the goal umpire raises both hands, another goal to Eagle Hawk. Well, Alan Bersley, let's check that statewide building society scoreboard after 22 Eagle minutes Hawk of the first three quarter. Goals, three to Northern United, just two points, and we've been playing uh, about 23 minutes into the opening term of the BFL Grand Final. And the goal kickers for the Borough, Gilmore, Slater and Munro, one each, balls back in the centre, but umpire Fletcher, and I'll tell you what, the Borough have assumed the ascendancy early in the Grand Final, much to the surprise of most. Eagle Hawk 3-3, Northern United two points in the grand final. There's the bounce, Ferring wins it down. Only as far as Mick Hogan, who kicks long toward Best and Adlam again. Can Best get the hands on the ball? He can't. It comes down to where running Rod Lee had the show. Gets a nudge in the back from White, and must surely take the free kick there on the half-forward flank. Almost the forward pocket on the outer side to the Barnard Street end. Very close to the 3 TV sign and the statewide building society banner hanging over the fence of the Queen Elizabeth Oval. He decides on the pass to Best. They're playing too much, I believe, John, through Best at the moment. They're putting all of their eggs in one basket down there. I think Tony Southcombe must be seriously considering bringing himself back on the field, Shane, for this move because they need drive badly around that forward zone. They're not getting it at all. Well, after the throw in, it was taken there and driven toward the goal square area. Fairing dropped what he should have taken. Best taps it into the open. Chance for Newman. He couldn't pick up. Taken now by Holt. Snapshot. Goal. And the first one of the day to United. And I believe, Johnny, as we said about Best not getting his hands on the ball, he set that one up by paddling it back out into the open. His Neiman fumbled the first time, but Leon Holt gathered what uh, Neiman should have taken, steadied and snapped the beauty. Let's check the scoreboard now with Eagle Hawk, three goals, three, Northern United, one goal, two, almost into the time on in the opening term. I think uh, Leon Holt deserved that goal, Shane. Um, I thought one was taken away from him uh, a minute ago, or a few minutes ago, which he really deserved. And I think it's only justice that he should have got that goal. I thought uh, he's been playing fairly well. Took a good grab a minute ago, too. There's the bounce in the centre. Mountjoy had to go up, in fact. Got it down as far as the Eagle Hawk player in Morrison, who tried to drive forward. Dave Wharton came in. He only got it as far as McDougal, who drove down toward his brother, Steve. He couldn't take the mark. Here's the running Evans. Away again. He puts it into open spaces on the grandstand side. And in rugby union parlance, a magnificent kick for touch, Johnny. Just <laughs> that was inside a John, the boundary. A John Beck was special. Lobbed <laughs> in by an inch and a half, Richard. Yeah. Yes, uh, Johnny Beckwith would have been proud of that. Actually, he was in before the out-of-bounds on the full rule came in. He was a uh, pass master at that. There's the throw in now. Wharton wins this one against Fairing. Only as far as Steve McDougall, who's out roving tricky at this stage. But now it's picked up by David Muir. And Muir kicks a long, glorious kick toward David Ludeman. Ball comes to the ground. Eagle Hawk now in trouble as United lead in the race for the ball through Herrick. He got a nudge, no free kick. Comes back to where Hogan had the chance. He got it toward Lederman, who went to Mountjoy. Mountjoy nearly took a glorious one-hander. It's on the ground. Robbie White's in there. Gets a nudge. No free kick. It's desperate play. Eventually hand pass to Hogan. Mountjoy's got it now. Runs into the open goal. Doesn't miss too many. 
and it's a three-way go in the goal square. Two versus one. Holt and Best versus Adlam. Holt gives it to Best and Best kicks a goal. I think it's through what he is. Yes, it is. And that's the second of the day to Northern United. And Ronnie Best's got goal number one. And Alan, that came from the classic two versus one confrontation. And Best used his mouth very well. Yes, Gary Adlam caught out unexpectedly there right in the goal square. He, could, he couldn't uh, look after both players at once. And Ronnie Best got the ball at the final moment and just popped it over his shoulder. A great goal. And Northern United coming back. The greatest full forward in country Victorian football has scored his first for the day on the statewide footy scoreboard. Eagle Hawk, 3-3-21, Northern United, 2-2-14. Two, two, There's the bounce in the centre, Ferring gets it down. Only as far as Mountjoy, who's been BOG in my opinion, first quarter. He goes only as far as Brooks, and Brooks puts it into open spaces on the Eagle Hawk forward line. Gilmore tried to tap across to Pangrazio. Gilmore out of the game now as Fife goes oh. in. Oh, and got a nice one too. It's on down here in the forward pocket position. The game goes on. I'll get Richard Jones to follow that little to-do. And those two players still at it as it comes up now to where United are going into attack. And they've got the mark through David Ludeman. About six or seven players into it down on the Eagle Hawk forward line. But we'll keep our eye on the ball because United are bringing forward now. Here's a chance for Best versus Adlam. Best! Best's got the grab. Richard, as he goes back, describe the incident quickly. Yes, what happened down there was Craig Neiman and Ronnie Pangrazio tangled. Uh, I didn't see what happened with the best mark, but uh, they were on the ground rolling, and uh, there was seen to be a blow delivered to the side of the uh, uh, shoulder, and uh, Pangrazio and Craig Neiman were rolling around on the ground there for a while. OK, here's Best lining up. Second goal to Ron Best. It's OK, it's home. And United coming back at the end of the first quarter. Two goals to Ronnie Best. And Richard, that's the first time he's got away from Adlam all day. Great two-hour duel, best too strong. Yes, uh, well, I didn't actually, can't really comment much on it, the show because I was watching Ronnie Pangrazio and the other player, Craig Neiman, who's the back pocket player involved in that little melee. They're standing together now as a trainer comes out to uh, Craig Neiman, gives him a bit of a drink after that little uh, out for a little uh, first. OK, 27 minutes into the first quarter of the Bendigo Football League Grand Final. And at this stage of proceedings, it's 3-3-21 Eagle Hawk on the statewide Building Society scoreboard. Northern United, 3-2-20. Tap down from Wharton to Tricky was a good one. He looks for Holt at centre half forward. Holt might have given away a free kick. None paid. Yeah. Into the open spaces now where it's little uh, Neiman who's got the chance. He couldn't pick up and Robbie White comes out of defence. Oh, he's stopped well. Great tackle, Hogan, who went in hard there. Across it comes now to where Morrison gets a good hand pass going. Brendan Kane, best on the ground. In the uh, preliminary final, drives toward the half-forward flank now for the Eagle Hawk side. But it's Leo Demio coming out well from defence. He drives towards Shelton, half-forward flank out of side. And Leon Holt's played a pretty good first quarter here, uh, Richard. Uh, Holt was uh, down heavily, it looked like there, Johnny. Uh, he uh, is in the hands of the trainers there. There's Georgie Thompson and the trainers out there with him. But uh, as play goes on, uh, Holt's still receiving attention. He flew high in the air, Richard, and came crashing down. And that was the reason for, uh, I think he probably just winded, but he fell very heavily, and he lay very prone, Alan Besley. Yes, Dr McGregor out having a look at him at, at the moment. There's the kick now from United as they drive forward. And he's a clever player, and a good job in this first quarter, has Scott Neiman. Got a mark out there in front of Brooks. He looks for Best. He's found him too. And Best, only in this last five minutes, has really begun to exert any influence on the game. And this greatest full forward ever in country football is lining up at the Barnard Street end for his third goal. After we said he'd had a quiet quarter, he's shutting us up in no uncertain terms. He doesn't miss too many, does Ronnie. And it's home again! And United are in front of the grand final. Three to Ron Best in the first quarter. Well, Johnny, you can't speak too soon with champions. You certainly can't. We thought he was down. Adlam was doing a great job on him, gave him very little attitude. Fairing was coming around the back. The Eagle Hawk plan was working to perfection. But he's cut loose, Ron Best. He's the king of the QEO, there's no doubt about it. He knows exactly where the goals are, and he kicked about he kicked his third goal in about the matter of about seven minutes. Well, interesting thing there to just reflect back while the slow motion uh, replay was on, that uh, Eagle Hawk kicked the first three goals of the match and were actually in front by 20 points before uh, United came back, and it's mainly been in this time on period. Now, it's quarter time at the Queen Elizabeth Oval, and Northern United are 4-2-26, and they lead Eagle Hawk. 3-3-21. Repeating quarter time scores 4-2-26. Northern United to 3-3-21. Eagle Hawk, a most entertaining first quarter here. And at this particular stage of proceedings, I think we'll take a commercial break and be back at the QEO. We're back now at the Queen Elizabeth Oval in Bendigo for this famous simulcast in Central Victoria with TV8 and 3CV football. Statewide Building Society scoreboard at quarter time. Northern United 4-2-26, a leading Eagle Hawk. 3-3-21, goal kickers for United. Best three, Holt one for Eagle Hawk Slater. 
Gilmore and Munro, one goal each. That's the situation, John Forbes, some better players for the Eagle Hawks side. Eagle Hawk uh, surprised everybody that quarter, Shane. Their back line particularly uh, started off very well. Fearing in the ruck must be ranked one of the, be one of the best games he's played for a long, long time. Brilliant in defence, but he had great cohorts in uh, White in the back pocket playing brilliantly, and also McIver and Rogerson on the half-back flank. Nigger O'Connell went to uh, centre half back as was predicted. Adelham moved to full back. The Eagle Hawk back line playing brilliantly, but down on the other end of the ground, they've got Ron Prendrazio on the forward pocket and Danny Slater doing a lot down there. And they're cutting the Northern United, uh, they cut the Northern United defences to pieces early in the early in the quarter. Okay, thanks, John. That's the Eagle Hawk side of things. Uh, Alan Besley, what about the Northern United better players in that first quarter? Well, looking at the United, Northern United best players, Shane, I think that uh, Leon Holt has had a great game so far. Peter Fife playing at fullback has done a remarkable job. Gary Evans, uh, despite a heavy knock in the first five minutes, he's come back and played well on the centre line. And, of course, you can't forget the grand old master, Ron Best. A slow start. I thought the changing point came over that quarter uh, when uh, the big fella, Ferring, went under the ball because every time Best went in the first ten minutes, he had two flying against him. But Ferring going back on the ball, and uh, it left uh, Ron Best one out, and that's when he got his three goals. James, a quick summary of the quarter. Well, Eagle Hawk started off very well indeed, as we all saw, and uh, as the cameras showed the uh, viewers, they got away to a three-goal break uh, with the, the, the backman playing well, as John said, and uh, Slater, Munro, and... Uh, Gilmore getting those three quick, uh, three early goals. It wasn't until close to the time on period that Northern United actually showed some nous and uh, got the ball towards uh, Best and uh, he did the rest. But it took uh, that, la that time on period for uh, United really to show people why they're the flag favourites. Richard, do you think it was a very nervous start by the young Northern United side? It could well have been, uh, Shane. Uh, Johnny, rather, they haven't uh, played much football since the uh, last home and away match and uh, that could have be, been a problem with them. Well, Eagle Hawk going forward at the start of the second quarter. Slater gets a hand pass into open territory. Chance for the Borough now if they can pick up here. Player in the van is cartilage. He drives toward full forward, but United come out well. Demio, a bad kick. He was looking further afield down there for Trevor Ludeman. And they go hard. Free kick going the Borough's way. And it's going to go here to Brendan Kane. One minute second quarter of the Bendigo Football League Grand Final. Getting pretty dark and cloudy again as Danny Slater makes good position between half forward flank and forward pocket at the Barnard Street end on the grandstand side. He's too far out to score, coming into a slight breeze to my mind. Right foot torpedo lands on the forward pocket and bounces past Gilmore and Fife on that occasion and goes through for one behind. United favoured by a slight breeze and... Uh, Slater's shooting Richard not too accurate early. No, one goal three, Danny Slater so far in this match. Uh, Eagle Hawk uh, three goals four to uh, United four two. That's the statewide building society scoreboard. And after the kick out, it dribbles toward the outer side wing position. Great kick by five. Picked up here now by Morrison. And his kick's a bad one. Has gone over the boundary line on the full. Four two playing uh, three four. And the uh, game at the moment is at a pretty interesting stage because United kicking with a slight breeze in this quarter. And if they can get the first couple in this term and get a bit of a break on the Borough, the Borough might find it pretty hard to get back into the game. Here's Mountjoy again. He gets it further afield looking for Holt. Got too much pace for Brooks and well shepherded for two. But in come the desperate Eagle Hawk defenders down there in that back pocket position. We're going to see stacks on the mill. And there was a good example of Holt's pace, Richard. Yes, well, uh, Paul Brooks, the interchange player, who's come on the field, uh, smothered quite well there and uh, grabbed Holt. He said that... Uh, the United couldn't get away. There's the bounce down now in the forward pocket position. Up they go. Fairing versus Ludeman this time. Comes to the ground where Eagle Hawk bring it away through Slater. But his kick's a bad one and Mark magnificently actually in the crowd. Glorious overhead mark over there. By Vin and, Slater uh, that used to play for United. Vinny yeah, Slater. Tell you what, yeah. Jonesy, you've got good eyes over there to the far side of the ground anyway. It might have been Vinny. And if you're listening on the uh, 3CV uh, broadcast this afternoon, Vinny over there near the 3CV banner. Good luck to you, me boy, and a fine mark. You should be on the field, uh, judging by that form. And the free kick's going to go to Mountjoy. He drives in, looking for Wharton over the back. In fact, it's Mountjoy taking the mark from the from the kick by Sheldon, it was. And a great mark to Gary Mountjoy. Over the top of big Dave Wharton gives you an idea. And Mountjoy, the Mickelson medal winner, is burning here. He's by far best player on the ground to my mind. I reckon he's had about 13 possessions already. He lines up to the city end from 60 metres out. He's going to drop in the square area. Best was up onto the back. Danger! And it might be tapped through for a point. It went over the back of Adlam, Best and Ferring. And they charged in the United forwards. Only had to get a soccer off the ground, Johnny. But it just didn't come. Certainly didn't, Shane. But uh, Gary Mountjoy absolutely dominating this game. He's showing the type of form that made him bendigo 
joined Mankles and medal winner in 1984. And he's just taken another great mark after the kick out which wasn't paid. Evans goes in for United. Rain coming down again at the Queen Elizabeth Oval. Comes to Mountjoy again. He runs toward the open goal, clears the pack and bounces the wrong side of the post. And it's one point only. And Jonesy, he's unstoppable at the moment. What would you do if you were fearing? Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, who, who do we reckon's playing on him, John? That's the problem. Uh, Mount, well, I thought Rogerson started off with the centre on him, but he's certainly got away and he's done another lot of damage. I think it might be Morrison or possibly Everly. But anyway, after the kick out, it goes down here to Shelton. He has a flying shot for goal, which is offline again. And it's all united at the start of the second quarter. They go on to 4 5 29 on the statewide building society scoreboard. We've gone four minutes, second term. And Eagle Hawk at 3 4 22. The free kick situation Eagle Hawk 15, Northern United 9. After the kick out, they go up, comes to the back of the pack with a running Morrison, who's playing a good game, drives to an open forward line. Charts for Monroe. He taps on further afield to Pangrazio. Lee's a desperate defender down there, but Pangrazio is still leading in the race for the ball. Gets away from Neiman and puts it toward Gilmore, who's got it. He got out that time in front of Fife. He judged the breeze better and held up, and Gilmore took the chest mark, and he would be about 40 metres from goal on a 45-degree angle. Johnny great. Forbes, Gilmore's first real touch. A great deal between Peter Fife and Daryl Gilmore, but Daryl Gilmore, that five yards at, too fast that time, comes in, 45-degree angle. It's a drop punt, floats on its way. And the goal umpire signals only one point. Well, the statewide building society school board now is the Borough 3523. That breeze getting pretty swirly and light rain drizzling down here at the Queen Elizabeth Oval. Northern United 4529. Dole had the chance to mark after the kick out. Couldn't do so. Came to Rogerson, who got a scrambly kick in towards centre half forward. But United are going to clear here through Neiman. That's Craig Neiman who finds Leo Demio. He gets it on to Herrick. They're doing it in twos and threes. Herrick gives it to Evans. He's got too much pace for Pangrazio. Looks for best. Adlam's got the best spot this time. And the big fellow Gary Adlam's mark. But United brought the ball down the field with awesome pace that time. Adlam's kicks up beauty toward the halfback flank out of side. Must have gone 60 metres. Two versus one here, and Eagle Hawk went out as Steve McDougall bursts away. And McDougall now drives the ball toward half forward where Pangrazio's made good position out in front there of Craig Neiman, and Pangrazio's got the mark. He's got Slater on his own. Slater trips over at the vital moment. Tricky chips in, and Darren Tricky has taken the mark. And Alan Besley, the ball moving from end to end with furious pace here. Surprising the standard chain because it's pretty windy out there in that arena. There's the kick now as Eaglehawk try and drive forward again over the back of all players. And United are going to get it away, but a shocking handball ends up in Shane Dole's lap, and he's found Gilmore, who got out in front of Fife. Well, that was a dreadful handball that time from Muir, who was the offender. Shane Dole bursts through, and Alan Besley, we've got Gilmore lining up 45 metres out. I think United are doing the right thing with the ball now, Shane, because uh, they're giving the ball well out in front of uh, Daryl Gilmore, and he's got a lot more pace than Peter Fife, and I think this is the only way that Daryl Gilmore can get the ball. And that's a great goal, lifting the sides, and they're now dead level on four goals, five apiece. That's the statewide building society scoreboard, and that's the first goal of the second quarter of the Eagle Hawks side. Daryl Gilmore's second for the afternoon, 4 5 29 apiece. Statewide building society bringing you the action through 3CV and TV8, and Johnny Forbes, I think Alan Besley's comment spot on that the Borough are beginning to get the idea how to use Gilmore. He's now leading into space in a very open forward line. Yes, United, very mobile. They're a very fast running side, but uh, Eagle Hawk uh, did a good job then of just a shocking handball by Ludeman that uh, gave away a goal. There's the bounce in the centre. Here's the big duel again. Wharton wins it over Ferring, but a shark will by Everly. He's tackled as he tried to get his kick. Shelton goes in under plenty of pressure. Must be holding the ball against you, Brett Shelton. And it's Rogers, the captain of the Eagle Hawk side, who's going to take the free kick. He's got it just forward of the centre, kicking into what's a slight breeze. I think the breeze are really not favouring either side. Looks down here toward Dull. Ball's punched away there by Trevor Ludeman. Comes to the ground. Gilmore coming into the game a bit. He gets it across to Munro. Munro gets a nudge in the back. No free kick. And we're going to see a ball up at the true centre half forward position. Yes, so Gilmore is doing well now. He's coming to the play and uh, also very, very quiet early with Shane Dull. But he's uh, just bobbed in the last few minutes to do a bit, uh, Johnny. Shane Dole sporting a great strip of sticking plaster above his right eye. He sustained five stitches in the match last Saturday. Well, it's up into the Eagle Hawk forward line. Gilmore executes a glorious tackle on five. And he's got the free Gilmore. He's got the free kick and he's only, uh, let's say, 45 metres out. He's on the 45 degree angle. Almost an identical position from where he scored his last goal. And if he can kick truly again, Eagle Hawk will be back in front. He's lining up now. Big chance for the Borough to go back to the lead. This is a bad kick, though. He's hooked that one, Allen. 
at offline for one point only. And Eagle Hawk hit the front now. Four goals, 6.30 points on the statewide building society scoreboard. They lead Northern United 4-5-29. Only one point the difference as five prepares to kick out again. Alex to go straight up the centre looking for Big Wharton who hasn't had a great say in this game around the ground. And the big man Mountain Jeff Ferring's taken a good grab. And Ferring's got the ball at the true centre half forward berth. He goes along with one of those big roosts that he's so famous for. Oh, Pangrazio! Got up in the goal square, couldn't take the mark, comes to the ground. Tricky loses it to Slater. And uh, Slater did kick a goal, but the umpire has said Tricky earned a free kick before that. Well, that was danger that time, Johnny, for United. Uh, Ron Pangrazio playing a very dangerous game around there in that forward line. He's uh, very swift, he's accurate, and he's got a lot of opportunity. Well, uh, Tricky finds Evans, half-back flank grandstand side. And Evans drives now toward where Mountjoy's made good position. Ball punched away that time by his opponent in McIver, who appears to be picking up at the moment. But Mountjoy still manages to paddle it out toward uh, Hogan. Mountjoy's still in there at Scrambly play at this stage. Big uh, Ludeman goes in there now for the United side. He couldn't pick it up. And we're going to see a ball up now, half forward flank on the grandstand side. Eagle Hawk in attack and leading in the grand final by a point. 4 6 30 to 4 5. 29. There's the throw up now. Ferring versus Ludeman comes down where it's going to be Andrew McDougall to bring it away. Nice kick, McDougall. Drives toward a very open forward line. Tricky leads in the race for the ball for United. He puts a hand pass to nobody in particular. It's punched toward the centre where Hogan picks up. He tried to get it across field, but Rogerson chipped in. Well read, Rogerson. Goes to Pangrazio. He taps on field now. They're doing it well. The Borough is evenly picks up, but he's dispossessed. United try to bring it away as Muir gets the hand pass into open spaces. Good two-hour duel here now as Kane, Dole, see the ball to the boundary line as Herrick came in for the Northern United side. And a pretty entertaining grand final, Jonesy. Oh, plenty of action. Uh, this is what the crowd loves to see. The, the big thing about Australian rules football is the man-to-man -man clashes. There we saw Wharton and uh, Fairing, uh, Wharton and Dole going for the ball. And uh, there's the dangerous Danny Slater on his own in the forward pocket, or not quite on his own, but... Uh, couldn't quite uh, control the ball. Danny Slater has been fairly quiet since early in the match and the umpire has pulled out a free kick against him this time. He's given away a couple now as Danny. And it's going to be Terry Demio, the player with the ball. Free kick situation, the Borough 17, Northern United 11. They come to your compliments of our friend, wait for age. Brendan Cormick from 3CV as Ferring punches away. Does the spoiling, comes to the ground where Tricky doesn't know which way to go. Hand passes across and Slater chips in, well played. And Gilmore had the chance to mark, just couldn't make the ground. To the back comes Everly. Everly goes for home and it's through. Great snap, Andrew Everly. And that's the sort of goal that lifts you in a grand final, Alan. Oh, well, they're really coming alive now. This last five minutes of Eagle Hawk have really produced something. They're kicking against the breeze, and there seems to be something rejuvenated within that side, and one person is Daryl Gilmore at full forward. Great goal by Andrew Evely. He's selected the pick at the to uh, start off in the centre, but uh, didn't line up there. He's also got a roving commission, I'd say. He dashed down and got that very team-lifting goal for the Borough. Statewide Building Society scoreboard, Richard, at the... 12 minute mark of the second quarter. Eagle Hawk, five goals, a six, a 36, and a lead Northern United, 4 5, 29. Seven point lead to the Hawks. After the bounce, it comes in the direction now of Evans. He hand passes looking for Ludeman, who's quiet, but now taken by Hogan. He gets it back to Evans. Evans to Tricky. Here's danger. 20 metres out, right in front, goal. And United get one straight back. And the Swallows go to 5 5, 35. The Borough, 5 6, 36. And that's the first time all day, John, we've really seen the Swallow machine in action. That's the style of football which brought them to the supremacy in the Bendigo Football League in 84. That loose man, flow-on style on the forward line. Uh, players making position, drawing the defenders out. And Darren Trickey, who rarely misses, was given the opportunity to put through their fifth goal. Alan, check that statewide building society scoreboard. It reads Eagle Hawk, five goals, six leading Northern United, five goals, five. One point the difference in the Bendigo Football League grand final of 1984. Big crowd at this famous football venue, Queen Elizabeth Oval. In the heart of Victoria's premier town as Ferring takes it away from the bounce. That will be the highest kick I've ever seen. Must have gone 80 metres in the air. And <laughs> nearly brought rain in Frank Jones. As we look at it, it's brought rain, that one. Well, it has. We've picked up our papers again as the rain drifts in on the uh, broadcasting uh, point. But uh, one player I think we should mention here is Tricky. I don't think I've seen Tricky play as well as this all year. Well, he went quiet just for that five minutes when the Borough uh, got on top early. Yeah, but uh, he's been a steady player. It's been, been a good drill in that roving commission because Slater's also done well, as has Steve McDougall for the Borough. 
and we see Stacks on the mill on the outer side wing position at the moment. United try to bring it into attack. Mountjoy has been quiet for five minutes, and it's interesting that Eagle Hawker Shin control in that time. Rogerson goes in now after Mountjoy was dispossessed. He got it to Ferring. Ferring to Munro. Munro kicks toward the half forward flank outer side. Good duel out there as Sheldon bears in on the ball for United. Great tackle low. Or lucky not to lose it for a free kick. Big Dave Wharton's been quiet. And Johnny, I'd like your comment on Dave Wharton. A few tap outs, but hasn't done too much around the ground. He certainly hasn't, Shane. And he carries a big responsibility for North United today, David Wharton, because he is their number one ruckman. He's done it for most of the year. But the Eagle Hawk big men are on top of this stage. There's the throw in now. Ferring and Wharton again. Both players using their body. Went down to Mountjoy. Mountjoy kicks to Ward half forward. Here's a good borough mark and it's taken for them by McIver. Gee, Richard, he's been an improved player this year. Yes, much improved player. And had a very, very consistent final series, Robert McIver. Like McDougall, uh, Steve, the McDougall, Stephen and Andrew recruited from McCorner. And looks for Rogerson, who I believe might be playing in the centre. You could be right, Jonesy, or if not that, a ruck roving role anyway. And Rogerson now has taken the ball, half forward flank out of Sardi. He'll go long, looking down here for Pangrazio or Gilmore. Pangrazio uses his body well, too strong for Craig Neiman. He's got the mark forward pocket, goes in toward the true full forward position where Dole and Wharton went up and came to the ground. Ball getting a little bit slippery with the rain coming across the ground. Five tackle without the ball down there as a pack developed. Danny Slater saying he didn't shovel it off the ground and Danny didn't like it. No. But it's going to be a 5 free kick. Oh, and he goes short. They're falling into the old trap at the moment, United, but Sheldon's good enough to get out of it this time. Now he kicks long, and he goes toward a good two-hour duel here between Hogan and his opponent in Dole. Beats all players, goes to the back, Ludeman goes, gets the great hand past the hole. You can run into the open goal, me boy, from 40 metres, and it's home! And United are back in front of the grand final, and that was great football. And let's see what the umpire says, Jonesy. Well, I think he said he's run too far. Yes, he gave the signal just before he goaled. He's uh, uh, umpire trial single a couple of steps too far. And what a blow for Northern United that was. Well, Alan, do you agree with the umpire's decision? Oh, yes, he had the ball under the arm. He made no attempt to bounce it. Well, fair comment from Alan Desley. Joining editor of TV8, who's joined us here on this uh, famous simulcast this afternoon. United coming back into attack again. And Ludeman's pound that man Holt. Gee whiz, I thought he was a bit stiff myself as Holt goes toward full forward. Adlam's made position and taps it through for one point. Well, let's check that statewide building society scoreboard. United not in front after all. They've now drawn to a level situation, I believe. 5-6-36 to 5-6-36. So dead level on the scoreboard. 12 free kicks to 18. Eagle Hawk have the upper hand there. And after the uh, kick out, it's a good hour, two hour duel here between Mick Hogan and Andrew Everly. Hogan too clever. Gets the hand pass further afield. Now looking for Evans. Evan goes uh, towards Mountjoy, but Eagle Hawk come in desperately. And McIver's the player who's earned a free kick as Mountjoy gives Rogerson one to go on with. And Brooks having a few words to say down there too. And I don't think it was. Uh, to do with what they had for dinner last night either, thanks very much, although they did dine very well, the Borough boys, they tell me, as McIver kicks toward where Ferring and Wharton are having a good duel. Ferring taps to the back, Wharton got over his shoulder that time, and I detect a little bit of um, worry in Wharton's game at the moment, Johnny. Yes, I think he's very frustrated, Shane. Uh, Ferring's uh, just got the call over him at the moment, but this game's got a long way to go, but what a blow that was, the North United goal that Hulk uh, kicked and wasn't counted. Here's Eagle Hawk trying to bring the ball into attack again. Pangrazio goes toward Gilmore. Fife comes out desperately, heavily tackled. Still got it. Hand passes across field to Terry Demio. Well played. He goes toward Herrick. United's uh, handball today hasn't been as spot on as we're used to. Gilmore goes in now. He gets it across to Brendan Kane. Tackle without the ball. No free kick. Our supporters wanted one. It didn't come. And this famous simulcast of the Bendigo Football League Grand Final coming to you through TV8 and 3CV. There's the bounce down now, comes toward Kane. He goes now towards Steve McDougall. McDougall going the wrong way, breaks two tackles, well played. Gets it back to where Kane goes in. Back to Steve McDougall. He had White, now he decides to go to Slater, but Slater couldn't get there in time. And Terry Demio has come out to take the mark. And uh, Terry Demio, after a pretty ordinary start, Richard has got back into the game. Yes, he has. Uh, very, very uh, great team man, Terry Demio. Always talks to his uh, players all, you know, in the back line, come lifting them all the time. There's the kick now, down toward the wing position. Ludeman got up high, couldn't take the mark. Muir's in there too. Eventually Morrison had the show. He gave it to Steve McDougall. who got it toward Pangrazio, just couldn't take the mark. Darby Munro swoops on the ball. He gets it across field now, where they had the chance through Everly. Everly dodges two players, well done. Slater, gee whiz, he must have B.O. because nobody's anywhere near him. He's got the mark and can play on toward full forward. Gilmore over the back of five. Couldn't take the mark, comes to the ground. Hand pass to Dole, goal! 
goal to the borough, and Eagle Hawk are back in front. You can play that one to Danny Slater once more. Danny Slater is having a good deal with Demio, but it's on, it's on down on the forward pocket for Eagle Hawk at the Barnard Street end. It's really on. Well, I'll get the glasses on this one, Johnny, because this is on for young and old, and there's quite a few players grouped around the ball. We're going to see another, another free kick here. Now, this is the situation where the goal will stand, John, and they're going to get a second one. That's right, he's got a chance of kicking two goals in as many minutes. Uh, coming in now, Danny Slater. Now he's back Shane Dahl's got the ball. Right. He's right on the edge of the square. He's coming in now, only five metres out. And it's home again. And I wonder if when we look back at this game, Alan Besley, whether that might just be a turning point. It could be the turning point because it was uncalled for. The umpires are still talking to some of the players out there, so things are pretty hotted up there at the moment. Well, two goals to Shane Dole, and that's an incredible situation. So Dole goes to the head of the goal-kicking list all of a sudden, and Eagle Hawk have got a two-goal break all of a sudden. Gee whiz, that did happen quickly. Tony South must be scratching his head. 7 6 48, Eagle Hawk to 5 6 36 northern united that's the statewide building society scoreboard as they go up now wharton and bearing bearing got the tap away over toward evilly coming right into the game at the moment he's being chased by holt steady rain coming down again at the queen elizabeth oval holt gets the hand pass across to evilly again and it's eventually uh, shoveled over the boundary line and we've got a great uh, setup over there on the far side of the qeo with marquis lining the outer side and it really is a magnificent picture of the Queen Elizabeth Oval, except for this drizzly rain and the grey clouds which are looming at the moment. Tap down goes to Danny Slater. He breaks away well. Oh, got one too high, and uh, oh, he gave one back too. He doesn't mind giving one back to Danny. And he's got the free kick. Wing position out of sight. Calm down, Daniel, as he's going back now with Brett Sheldon on the mark. He'll look down here for Morrison. Impresses me, Morrison. Couldn't take the mark on that occasion. Now the speedster Munro comes into the game. He paddles the ball along in front of him, right in front of the 3CV sign. But Alan, the boundary umpire, has the last say on this occasion. Yes, he may have been 50 metres behind, but he had the last say, and it was unfortunate for <laughs> Eagle Hawk's case. But that break at two, uh, two goals is a very vital one at this stage in the game. Johnny, check that statewide building society scoreboard quickly. Eagle Hawk, 7-6-48, Northern United, 5-6-36, a 12-point margin in favour of Eagle Hawk. And we've gone now for 20 minutes of the second quarter of the Bendigo Football League Grand Final. What an entertaining one it's been. I think most expected United to get on top in this quarter, but I don't think the ball's been down on their full forward line more than once or twice for the term, apart from that first five minutes where they dominated and couldn't kick goals. After the throw-in, Shane Dole, it appears to be, who's going to take a free kick over there on the half-forward line out of side. He looks here for a great lead by Gilmore. Gilmore drops a sitter of a chest mark. Comes to the ground with Pangrazio dives in. Kane held without the ball. Still no free kick. Muir executes a great tackle. It's on the ground. United at the bottom. Must uh, surely get a free kick. Up by says, no, give it to me. I'll ball it up. Well, Herrick was uh, jumped on almost there by Gilmore. But the umpires said no. I'll let discretion be the better part of battle there and take a ball up at the true centre-half forward berth for the borough. Tap down goes to Herrick, a good one too. Herrick drives toward the wing position. Grandstand side of QEO. Race is on now. Gary Evans leads in the race for the ball. Paddles it toward the boundary. Owen oh, gives one out too there to Cartledge. <laughs> and uh, he doesn't mind giving out a bit either to Zemo. And we're going to see a throw in uh, just a tagging side of centre for the borough. Right in front of the main grandstand at the QEO. Big crowd here as it comes down toward Mountjoy. It's just been a little bit quiet in the second quarter. Mountjoy goes toward half forward. Holt's beaten for the ball by O'Connell, who comes out in front. He goes to Pierce, and Pierce across to Brooks. Brooks further afield to Morrison, and they've got Loosemen everywhere as the hand pass goes further afield now, and the Borough bringing it forward through Evely. Couldn't pick it up on that occasion. Oh, got one too high, not paid, and United are going to bring it away only as far as Kane. Kane back toward the true centre-half forward berth. Scrambly passage of players. Rogerson goes in, held without the ball, and surely must take a free kick. The offender on that occasion was Trevor Ludeman. As Rogerson's got the ball, true centre half forward berth, 23 free kicks to 12. It's in the goal square and it might be an Eagle Hawk mark. Now a little bit of pushing and shoving against Daryl Gilmore that time. And it's going to be Peter Five to take it up there at full back. He gets the lead from Sheldon. They haven't got too many runners at the moment, United. Sheldon misses what he should have taken. Rogerson goes in hard. Sheldon falls over and it's gone over the boundary line for a throw in. Statewide Building Society scoreboard, almost time on second quarter of the grand final. Eagle Hawk 7, 6, 48. Northern United 5, 7, 37. United might take a free kick here for over the shoulder. Now it's gone the other way. Oh. Swallow supporters didn't oh. like it either, Jamesy. No, I don't know where he got that one from. 
the player was tackled over his shoulder. Anyway, Rogerson's got the ball. Half forward flank grandstand side. Goal here to the burrow would be handy on half time. Comes to the ground after a pack flew. And Munro has kicked off the ground in Pele style. And it has shaved the goal post on the wrong side, Johnny. Two more coats of varnish and he would have hit the post, Shane. But it was the wrong side of the sticks for the Eagle Hawk uh, Club. But that two goal break they got in, the, in uh, that little melee that started about five minutes ago could be the turning point in this game. Let's check the statewide scoreboard now with Eagle Hawk seven goals seven leading Northern United five goals seven. Two goals the difference in the Bendigo Football League Grand Final after the kick out the Borough in possession again. Consistency would have seen a Northern United holding the ball free kick there it didn't come. This time he's decided to pay over the shoulder. Can't follow those couple of decisions and anyway United are going to take the free kick down here on the half back flank on the outer side. Player with the ball is Lee. He decides to go inboard toward uh, Ludeman. But uh, we're going to have to see the ball transferred back on this occasion. And he's going to have a second go. So United in possession. Brett Sheldon might be, in fact. He goes for the right foot torpedo. Around that outer side of the ground, O'Connell got into the back of Evans. No free kick. Evans scrubs up well. Well done and fires an effective hand pass across ground to the running Lee. That's good football. Or is it uh, McGrath on the ground? Now it was Lee. Down toward full forward. Eagle Hawk come out from defence again. Paul Pierce got one too high from Big Dave. And uh, he's quite happy with that. Uh, Robbie McIver, in fact. And McIver's uh, gutsy player, this fellow, really impresses me. And he's got the ball between full and set a half back. He decides to go to a lead from Brooks on the halfback flank out of side. Good pass, good mark. And Paul Brooks has got it. The school teacher from St. Teresa's in Kennington goes for a kick now around that outer side. Looks down here for Evely. Mountjoy's got the front berth. Evely's been a good player on the second quarter, but Mountjoy outpointed him that time. He comes down looking for Tricky, but out comes O'Connell. Takes a good mark and passes to Pangrazio. And their foot passing is immaculate at the moment, the Borough. Pangrazio's got it at centre half forward, and there'll be 15 metres because Herrick ran in over the mark. Now Craig Neiman takes the mark as Herrick goes long. I should say Pangrazio goes long, looking for Gilmore. United, plenty of players down there, though. And they're going to bring it away as the hand pass comes out to Trevor Ludeman. And he should find a Northern United teammate out here. And the player with the ball's Muir on the wing position. Muir kicks along down toward the half-forward flank. United in front. Good mark here. And it's been taken on this occasion for the Swallows' side by Lee. Rod Lee from Calaville will look to Best at full forward. And Best's got it. Oh, he's got a magnificent pair of hands, John. There's no way they can upset him in any way, Shane. They can't get in front of him, he'll take them. They get him behind him and take him. They can't come in from the side because he can out-grab out anybody in the competition. Oh, he's a bustler. He's a champion. 30 metres out right in front. And the problem with opposition is, Alan, he never misses. That's the problem. With, he's had a very uh, quiet second quarter, kicking three goals in the opening term and just one goal in this quarter. His tally so far, four goals. And Northern United come back with Eagle Hawk 7-7 seven, seven, and uh, Northern United 6 goals 7. Just 6 points the difference here in a great grand final entering time on. 49 to 43, 6 points the difference. And James, would I be right in saying Best has nearly scored all his goals in time on in either quarter? It appears to be that way, Shane. I think the first one in the first quarter was probably just uh, outside that, that period. But uh, certainly the other three have been in this time on period and uh, very vital goals. As a matter of fact, the goal that's got uh, Eagle Hawk in front is that extra one that Shane Dole got. I'm sure Tony South will have have words to say about that at half time as Mountjoy gets it away from the bounce, goes toward the forward line, but O'Connell playing a dashing game, backs up well, gets a hand pass to Pierce, Pierce goes to Evely. That one a bad hand pass as Tricky was bearing down on him and it's gone over the boundary line for a throw in. It's on the outer side of Queen Elizabeth Oval in Bendigo, marginally into Northern United's attacking zone, the Swallows, the Maroon and Golds, Eagle Hawk, the two Blues, there's the throw in, Wharton and Fearing over both their heads, to where O'Connell backed up well from the back, breaks two tackles, one by Sheldon, the other by Wharton, and then goes wide looking for Slater, but he went wide all right, he went uh, via the coast, and it's gone over the boundary line on the full, and it's going to be Terry Demio taking a free kick, with Slater on the mark, he drives down here looking for Wharton, but out come the Borough defenders again, they're doing it in style, as the hand pass goes across from Pangrazio, and up goes McDougall toward the half forward line, and we've got Pangrazio taking a good mark down here for the Borough side, that was Munro in fact who gave the handball out, now Pangrazio drives to full forward, Gilmore out pointed, but the dangerous Slater, gee there's danger wrapped on the ball when he gets it, and he always does something with it, he's drives across looking for Dole. Dole goes further afield to Kane. He was under pressure as he handballed. Umpire said throwing the ball and they're going to see a Northern United free kick. 
And Richard, the pressure's been intense in this game. Oh, yes. Uh, great, the grand final. P pity about those little showers of rain every now and again, but uh, it has been a magnificent game. Very tightly contested and plenty of everything. And Trevor Lederman's found Herrick with a great mark, and Herrick goes inboard to Tricky with 27 minutes, second quarter of the Bendigo Football League Grand Final. Brought to you on CV by Statewide Building Society. In simulcast with TV8 this afternoon as they find Demio. He decides to go for a trot. Leo Demio, long torpedo to full forward. Best at Adler again. Now Joy was in there too. This time Fearing brings it away. Best still in there. Tackle without the ball. No free kick. Comes out to Mount Joy. He snaps all. Oh, we might see a free kick though, Jonesy. I don't think we've seen the last of this. No, it is. Uh, you're right. Just one point. Umpire rushed in there to say something to somebody. But in fact, we're going to see a kick out take place. Alan, let's check that statewide building society scoreboard after 27 minutes, second term. Yes, some three minutes into time on now. Northern United, six goals, eight trailing. Eagle Hawk, seven goals, seven. Here's the kick out now. Gary Adlam drives up towards set a half back. Oh, evilly got high. Holt couldn't take the mark. Comes to the ground now. We're United drive forward again. A mark's built this time by Lee, but he's got time to open up the handball to Leo Demio, who's running under plenty of pressure, though, from Robbie White. Brought to the ground, O'Connell's in there too, desperate play, forward pocket, United in attack, comes into the open, big Dave Wharton picks up, goes for home, and it's going to land to Best! Oh, and Best has taken a glorious mark down there, and he was flattened. And uh, it was Paul Brooks that appeared to have come in over the top of the pack, and uh, Best, he wasn't too pleased when he got up. I, I, experience uh, told in the end, he, he was more concerned with the ball than the, uh, the evening up business, but... Uh, Good bit of play by Dave Wharton. He broke into the uh, forward area, and it looks to me as though Leo Demio has been moved into the forward line. Shane, there he is looking on, on the half forward line. <laughs> okay, well, we've got Best lining up now from around about uh, oh, two metres out. Let's have a look for the shot. It's home. And Best has got goal number five. That's five in the first half out of United 7. They're back in front of the grand final. Gee, it's a great game of footy here. United 7 8 50. Eagle Hawk 7 7 49. And John, that was a gutsy mark because he was waiting for the ball to come and he had a pack emerging onto him. Yes, the Eagle Hawk defence hit him with everything except the Eagle Hawk Town Hall, I think. And uh, <laughs> and I loved the way Ron Best suckered Gary, Gary Adlam into the, stepping over the mark and the umpire took him right up to the goal line and he popped through and he's another great goal. Where would Northern United be without Ron Best at this stage of the game? And he's kicked four of those five goals in time on. We've uh, gone uh, one football missing at the moment, Alan. But at this stage of proceedings, uh, would you have Adlam on Best in the second half? Yes, I think he's got to stay there, but they need another big man to come in on the side to punch the ball away. It's going to be a tremendous finish this game with one point in it at almost half-time break now. Statewide Building Society scoreboard, United 7-8-50, Eagle Hawk 7-7-49. There's the bounce. Fering goes up against Ludeman on the ball now. Ludeman taps away. In goes Morrison for the borough. He gets it across to O'Connell. O'Connell toward Brendan Kane, who's been quiet. He's dispossessed by Mick Hogan. Down toward Best again. Two out. Jill Adlam in front. There's the siren for half time as Tricky was bearing down on the ball. And the situation here at half time in the Bendigo Football League Grand Final. Northern United, 7 8 50. Eagle Hawk, 7 7. 49 and this is a terrific game of football with only one point the difference at half time ron best has got five goals for united in that quarter they kicked three goals six and the borough kicked four goals four united looked good early the borough got on top midstream after an interesting incident which john and richard will comment on shortly and then we saw united uh, take the supremacy toward the end of the quarter so a point the difference at half time. I think at this stage, with Alan Besley lining up a couple of pretty interesting interviews for our half time segment. We'll take a short break and be back at the Queen Elizabeth Oval shortly. Occasion by uh, Leo Demio. We've had the five skydivers arrive on the ground. We've had the footballer's gift, which was won by Tony Gundry of South Bendigo. Mark Mulqueen of Northern United was second, and Belcher of Kennington was third. Uh, all set now, Alan and John, for the third quarter, and uh, this will probably be the one which makes which decides it. Well, it's interesting to note, Tony Southcombe's still got the track suit on, but I don't think it's far away from him making an appearance in this game. I, I agree with that, Alan. I think he's got to come on now. This is the time. And, and line up at centre-half forward, because the best Southcombe combination has won a many a premiership for many a side. You can go back through Bort, and you can go back to Golden Square, and also they have never won one with Northern United, so they'd both be very keen, but they've got a plan going between them. They've played together for many, many years. And Tony Southcombe is what Northern United need at centre-half forward right at this point of time. Well, this is going to be the telling quarter, I believe. I think the side that gets the break in this quarter will win the BFL Grand Final. 
free kicks at the moment, Shane, are interesting. Eagle Hawk 25 free kicks and Northern United 15. Yes, that is an interesting situation. Uh, Alan, your thoughts on the umpiring? I think they're doing a great job because this is a, any grand final is a hard uh, final to umpire. All right, there's uh, some people at the ground will comment about that uh, incident in the goal square resulting in two goals, but I don't think you can uh, fault the uh, the umpiring uh, exhibition here at the QEO today. I think I'd uh, be more inclined to comment on the Holt incident actually more than the goal square incident. I thought they did the right thing on giving Dole a second kick, but uh, I'm sure there'll be many Barra, uh, United supporters who'll be saying uh, Holt did not run too far, but of course the umpire has the last say. It's silly arguing after the event. Yes, it was a, a morale-destroying effort when that whistle blew and he did signal instead of the all-clear, it was a free kick uh, to, I think it was Robert O'Connell was the uh, recipient. As I said at the time, Shane, the ball was under his arm. He made no <laughs> attempt to bounce it and he had about ten paces. I think he was gone. Like All American right. football. All right, there's Lasaran to get the third quarter of the Bendigo Football League Grand Final underway. Tony Southcombe not on the ground, still on the bench, obviously saving himself for a desperate last quarter if need be, as Muir gets the first kick of the third term. United in this quarter attacking the Barnard Street end. Scores as we go into the third quarter. 7-7, seven, seven, 49 apiece. Both sides on 7-7. Seven, seven. It's been a most entertaining game. It's had everything. Plenty of fire. Great marking, a little bit of rain to soften the ground down and soften those bumps. We've had 36 desperate players and quite a few of the big names down this afternoon and quite a few of the younger, lesser known players from both sides have certainly been providing good games for the respective sides. I refer to the McIvers and the Morrisons and the Everleys for Eagle Hawk and players like Tricky and Neiman for the uh, Northern United side. Going for their first ever Major League Grand Final victory as Wharton wins a tap away. Goes to Brendan Kane. He looks for Dole at centre half forward. Dole beaten on this occasion. Backs up and tries to go in again, but United have got the break as they clear now through uh, Neiman. But he's gone toward the boundary line. In fact, over it goes. And on the full two, and the Eagle Hawk crowd love that. And it's going to be United uh, loss of uh, kick there, or loss of possession as we say. And uh, the Borough take it as the kick comes across now from uh, Morrison. He gets it to Brooks, and Brooks goes towards centre half forward. Here's a glorious mark by Muir over the top that time of Peter Rogers and the Eagle Hawk captain. Muir sends a long torpedo down looking for Hogan. In goes Shelton. He's too slow, dispossessed. Might have been holding the ball. Wasn't paid as Hogan gets it to Tricky. And now they've got the runners as it goes to Lee. And Lee can come in board and look for Ronald Best. Two out duel. Best versus Adlam. Over the back comes Brooks to punch away. But it's all United as it goes to Holt. He kicks toward the goal square. Off the side of the boot. He had Best waiting on his own. And McIver does the clearing. He goes to Brooks. Halfback flank grandstand side. Oh, he took a long time as Best shoved him as he kicked the ball. Made it go off the side of the boot. That was a good example to any young player, uh, Johnny, as uh, Ron Best chased that player right out of defence. Yes, Ron Best, a great uh, footballer, and a lot of people say he can't run and he can't chase. Well, that just proved them wrong. There's the uh, throw in now as Wharton gets it down. Sharked here by uh, Slater. Slater goes toward the centre, and a good mark taken by Morrison. He thought of going too, did Morrison. Now gets the hand pass to the running Steve McDougall. He's the player who gets this Eagle Hawk machine a light down to Gilmore. Couldn't take the mark as Bate came in. And United able to clear again. Well played, Scott Neiman. He drives toward the outer wing position where Herrick's made good position. He's got yards as Herrick now as he goes back and kicks along. Looking down here for Mountjoy. O'Connell out in front. McDougall comes into Shark. Couldn't take it. Now O'Connell gets ridden into the ground. And Robbie O'Connell... VCFL representative, Bendigo League captain in past years, is going to take this free kick half-back flank on the outer side of QEO. Skies grey out to the back, to the uh, west, but uh, fairly clear overhead at the moment. As the kick goes in toward the centre, clears all players. Dole's got the show, he fumbles. In goes Evans, he couldn't pick it up either. Now it's Hogan, and Hogan picks up and goes long as Dole and Evans are having a bit of a to-do. Adlam comes out this time in front of Ron Best, and Gary Adlam, though Best has got five, has done a serviceable job down there today. And Adlam's got the mark. He took the torpedo down towards Slater. Slater couldn't take the mark. Kane executes a glorious tackle on Herrick. He didn't go too far. Now Slater gets a nudge. And I think it might be Danny Slater over there who's going to take the free kick for this Eagle Hawk side. Danny Slater with possession. Out of side wing position. He looks for Rogers and he must be playing a half forward role at the moment. Dave Ludeman goes in. Racing and also is Terry Demio. But the ball beats all players over the boundary line for a throw in. We've got three minutes of the third quarter, Jonesy. And I think at this stage, what do you say? It's uh, the calm before the storm because Could no be. scores as yet. Could be, uh, Shane. The Tony Pierce has just come off and Andrew McDougall just gone back on for Eagle Hawk. So uh, Pierce is uh, obviously over that leg injury. 
Thanks, Jonesy. The sporting editor of the Bendigo advertised at Northern United cleared, but here come Eagle Hawk again. Good game from McIver as he drives forward, but it's Evans clearing for United. Battle of the half-back lines at the moment as Evans finds Leo Demio. He's got pace to get away from Robbie O'Connell. Breaks the tackle and fires a pass to Best. And Best's got it. And well played, Leo Demio. And back down the ground, well played, Gary Evans, to set up that forward move as Best lines up now from 15 metres out, right in front. Ronnie Vesti now going for his uh, sixth goal of the afternoon. And this will put Northern United in front. Kicking to the Barnard Street end. Goal umpire right underneath the ball in. And it's true, and it's home. Six goals to Ron Best and United back in front in this great grand final. Ron Best doing it on his own up the Northern United forward, forward zone. He got six out of eight at this stage with that five minutes gone in the third quarter. Statewide Building Society scoreboard has the Swallows now back in front, Jonesy. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, Ronnie Best, as uh, uh, Alan just said, has got six. The other ones have come from Tricky and uh, Leon Holt. Leon Holt, of course, a bit unlucky not to get that one when he uh, tore down the ground with a ball under his uh, arm, a la rugby style, but uh, wasn't have played it. There's the bounce in the centre. Ferring goes up uncontested, takes it out of the air, drives toward Dole at centre half forward. Three grabs must be paid. Surely wasn't. Couldn't understand that one as the hand pass comes across to Tricky now. And Tricky of United goes toward half forward where Mountjoy is outmarked this time by Paul Brooks, who hasn't done a bad job actually since he came on the ground in the second quarter. Brooks kicks across centre, Dole in front this time, has the ball punched away by Trevor Ludeman, comes to the ground. I sense United are getting on top as a shark well and driven toward Leo Demio. That's good football by the United defenders. Leo Demio looks for Gary Evans as Hogan set it up. And Evans has got the mark, deep half forward flank, grandstand side to the Barnard Street end. Far too far out to score is Gary Evans. Greatly experienced player of the Bendigo Football League. Could be waiting for a lead from Best. Puts in the pass to Demio. It was a bad one. Holt Shark breaks a tackle. Breaks another. Goes onto the right foot. Puts it in toward the goal square. Best waited for the bounce. Adlam attacked it. Adlam won out and drives a kick only as far as Mick Hogan, who's marked for the Northern United side. They've got loose players everywhere as Tricky leads and marks now at the true centre-half forward berth. Here's another short pass coming in. And United have got it again. Not much closer to goal. And the player with possession is Brett Sheldon. Hasn't kicked a major yet this afternoon. He would be uh, about 55 metres out. He'd be directly in front, kicking from the cricket pitch at the Barnard Street End, for those who know the QEO. Need to be a good kick from there. It's floating on toward the goal line. Fairings there. Wharton might have marked or had it gone over the line. Let's see what the umpire says. One point only. And it's 8-8 playing 7-7. Dave Wharton flew like a bird to pluck that one down, but the ball had crossed over the white line. He must have been saying to himself, Alan, why haven't I got Ferring punching it away? Ferring wasn't interested. Well, Ferring should be kicking out for Eagle Hawk in this quarter. There's a glorious kick out, though, by Adlam as we speak, and a great mark, too, by Muir. Come right over the top that time of Rogers. And Good by a Muir, Shane. Oh, yes, he impresses me, Jonesy. He's got this ball just short of set of half four. There's a great kick back to the goal square, and it's Wharton this time. Wharton. Got in front that time of Andrew McDougall, Ferring and Adlam. And, and Big Dave, I reckon he might have got a rev at halftime just between you and I. And he's come out now taking a good grab right in front. And the chance to put United 13 points in front in the grand final. He lines up now to the Barnard Street end. Very important kick this one from the ex Sandhurst champ. 15 metres out. Right foot drop punt. It's home, and United with Dave Wharton kicking his first of the day, and their second for the quarter. Go to 9862 on the statewide building society scoreboard. Eagle Hawk 7 7 49. Before a comment from Johnny Forbes on that one, free kicks at the moment. Eagle Hawk 28, Northern United 15. Dave Wharton, after being very frustrated by missing or by mark, taking a mark on the goal line. Certainly made amends moments later when he put through a good goal for Northern United. And the Swallows getting a handy break now on the state, uh, statewide scoreboard with Northern United 9 goals 8 leading Eagle Hawk 7 goals 7. Yes, I think the Borough need the next goal in this game. Uh, United have got the ascendancy as United stream forward again. Holt, he'll look for best at full forward over that player's head. And Adlam takes the relieving mark. O'Connell's made position. Halfback flank grandstand side. O'Connell's got the mark. Nick Hogan might be penalised 15 metres too if he's not careful, but it's O'Connell now. He'll drive down here looking for Rogers, and who got the front berth, punched to the back, that's where Pangrazio should have been. Instead of flying, this lets Tricky come in now, and Tricky can do it easily toward Hogan, and Hogan's got the mark wing position. It was played, though he did drop it. He gets it to Brett Sheldon, and Sheldon goes in board to Mountjoy, and Mountjoy's got the grab. Gee, they're loose at the moment, the borough, and Mountjoy's got it just short of the true centre-half forward berth. Big fairing on the mark, you've got to kick high over that fellow. He'll look down here for his forwards in Best or Wharton. They've got two big players up there at the moment. 
to take the grabs. That's giving Best a bit of a hand because now there's someone who's got a mind, Wharton. Anyway, Eagle Hawk clear from Gary Adlam and he finds Morrison out there on the half-back flank. 15 metres against Demi O, or was it Evans? It was Evans. And now the pass comes into Steve McDougall, and he's got the mark. Both sides force into the short game. Now McDougall goes long and high. No one to kick to. Dole caught out of position. Ludeman dropped what he should have taken. He got it there to Trevor Ludeman now, and Trevor Ludeman goes wide. Here's the speedster Evans, and he's away. Puts the pass in down here looking for Wharton. Couldn't take the mark. Andrew McDougall at the back recovers. He's forced toward the boundary line. In fact, it's gone over for a throw-in. Well, I've got a 13-point break, Jones, and that's a pretty handy one on a day like this. Well, it seems to be a very, a very important one, Shane. Uh, 9 8 62 plays 7 7 49 and in fact uh, eagle hawk hasn't scored this quarter at all not even a point well there's wharton again getting another position here's danger best got good position oh he's got a good mark oh that was a lovely mark he came from the back of adlam he read the flight of the ball better adlam always looked in trouble when the ball was in the air and ronnie best now is going to have a shot for goal let's paint the picture under cloudy skies at the qeo he is about 12 meters out coming from the main scoreboard to the Barnard Street end, and he's on a pretty acute angle. Not an easy shot, but the champion doesn't miss too many. It's home, and it is 10-8-68, Swallows. Borough, 7-7-49, seven, seven, and in trouble. And seven goals now to Ron Best at full forward for Northern United as they get away from Eagle Hawk in this great grand final at the Curio. Straight wide footy scoreboard, Northern United, 10-8-68, Eagle Hawk, 7-7-49. Seven, seven, uh, Christy looking ready to come on. Yes, yeah, Stephen McDougall's coming off. I don't know uh, why you take off one of your prime movers. He's holding his right arm a bit uh, strangely, uh, Sh Shane. But anyway, uh, Christy's on and Stephen McDougall's off. Well, Ferring gets the tap away. Gee, the Borough are in trouble as Dole drives toward the forward line area. Pangrazio in the back. He only needs a lucky bounce. It won't come for him. Now he gets it. Goes for home at the city end. And I think he's missed it, has he? No, no. it's got through. Good goal. Pangrazio of the Borough. And that's Eagle Hawk's first goal of the quarter. Pangrazio's first of the day. He read it off the pack well. And that was the first time in this quarter, Alan Besley, that Eagle Hawk have been able to bring it away from that centre diamond quickly. I don't seem to appreciate that long break at half time. It seems to take a little bit out of them on the legs, apparently. And uh, the Swallows look that little bit quicker around the ground in this opening 10 minutes of the third quarter. 10-9. In fact, I'll check that scoreboard. 10-8. 68 Northern United. Eagle Hawk 8755. That's the statewide building society scoreboard. We've gone now for 11 minutes of the third quarter. Mountjoy gets the hard ball out of the middle, only as far as O'Connell. And O'Connell goes wide toward that wing position where Cartledge leads in the race for the ball for the borough. But it's beaten him over the boundary line for a throw in. Well, they're back again within two goals, Jonesy. And uh, gee whiz, it's been a touch and go grand final. Yep, well, this is the this is the end that I reckon is the main end for a team to be going to. This is the city end, and that's where Eagle Hawk are going. And they've got to be up with them, I reckon, at the uh, last mar uh, last change, or in, in fact, perhaps a little in, in front to, to take it out. OK, there's comments from sporting editor of the Bendigo Advertiser, Richard Jones. As United bring it away from the fence and Hogan marks it centre half back. Leads made by Leo Demio, playing a good good, uh, good third quarter, this fellow. He gets away from his opponent, hand passes really into no man's land. He was looking out there for Scott Neiman, who couldn't Very win possession. Back. And here's uh, McIver, G to go this fellow, driving down to where Slater's marked at centre half forward in front of Mount Chui and the bearing down Trevor Ludeman. Danny Slater, look at the pass, usually a beauty, this time not a good one, as he drives down toward Christie just on the ground. Christie got a nudge, no free kick. Muir's a good defender, plays it out to toward Terry Demio and Hogan. Hogan having a good quarter, chased by Gilmore, but gets his kick only as far as the big man mountain himself in Jeff Ferring. He fires the hand pass across to Darby Munro. Back it goes to Jeff Ferring, runs through half forward and puts it to Gilmore. Oh, he drops a sitter, dropped a sitter, tricky tackle down there. It stacks on the mill in the goal square area. Christie breaks away now, gets the hand pass across here toward Dole. He's necked and must take a free kick. And Gilmore has dropped now two sitters in this match, one at either end, and Dole is going to line up about 15 to 20 metres out from goal to the city end, grandstand forward pocket, and he is on about a 45 to 50 degree angle. Plenty of experience, Shane Dole. They need this one, the Borough. It comes back with the breeze, but not enough. And one point only, two goals the difference at the QEO. A miss by Shane Dole that could have been a goal and that would have put Eagle Hawk right back in business now. 10-8-68, 8-8-55.
five on the statewide footy scoreboard. Okay, they're just charging that to 56 the way it should be, so it's 12 points the difference as Northern United bring it away from the fence. Evans gets it to Tricky under pressure though. He'll go looking for Holt. O'Connell got front berth, comes to the ground. Dangerous Demio having a great quarter. Well shepherded for by Hogan. Great two out duel coming up again. Best and Adlam. Oh, he's got it again. Oh, how oh. do you stop it? <laughs> he is magnificent. Oh, very good. That Shane, I think, a... I think they'll have to be building a statue in gold to him and the Main Street of Raywood tonight. Well, Ron Best has got uh, two, four, six, seven for the day. He was he was uh, leaning back to uh, fall to the ground as he took that one. Adlam was out of position. Smith couldn't do too much about it. White, I should say. And Best has kicked a goal from 20 metres out right in front. Ron Best has got eight for the afternoon. And let's bring the ball back the other end of the ground, Alan Besley, and reflect on that bad miss of Gilmore's. Yes, that was a costly one right in front of the goal. He had the first grab it. He had about two yards on his opponent, dropping the ball at a costly time like that. And then Shane Dole unable to convert after a free. And the ball's gone straight down the other end of the goal uh, area. And uh, Ron Best registering his eighth goal in the Bendigo Football League Grand Final of 84. Richard Jones checks the statewide building society scoreboard. Northern United, 11-8-74. Uh, Eagle Hawk, 8-8-56. And interesting to note that Shane Dole kicked a point that time. He was offline badly in one of the finals matches. I think it was against Sam. Shane, he kicked six points for the day. And here's Best leading out again, and he's got the mark again after Neiman drove forward after the bounce. And Ron Best has got the ball 55 metres out. In fact, uh, possibly a little closer. Maybe let's make it about 50. He's just short of the cricket pitch to the Barnard Street end from right in front. Oh, and no worries. It's home again. And Best's got nine. And he's winning this grand final from his own boot. Nine out of 12. And this simulcast coming to you through TV8 and 3CV. John Forbes. Ron Best, fourth goal for the term to give him nine. Give him uh, nine. Yes, nine, spot out, on. nine out of twelve. I think this will get the league statisticians looking through the record book just to see who's kicked the most goals in the Bendigo League Grand Final. And the way it's going, and there's still a quarter and a half of this match left. Ron Best must be well up with it. Alan, can you see Eagle Hawk getting back from four goals down? I think now's the time to shift Adlam away from Best because he's got complete control of that area of the footy ground here at the QEO. Well, the Borough in trouble on the grand final. Third quarter's win premierships, and United have seized control. 12-8-80 to 8-8-56 the situation. Munro trying to do it on his own, breaks a tackle, goes back in board and loses possession. Picks it up again right in the centre. Gutsy effort. Gets it to Evely, who's been quiet this quarter. And Evely goes long to Gilmore now here's the difference can Gilmore get the grab he can't it comes to the ground after five punched away Cartledge gets a nudge and it now it's gone the other way dropping the ball against Cartledge and Northern United are going to take the free kick through David Muir free kicks Eagle Hawk 29 Northern United 15 there's the kick oh glorious mark to the borough here though after that Muir defensive clear away and it's been taken for them over here by it might be Morrison over there I'll get the glasses of that player for you he can have a shot from here anyway. He's only 40 metres out. He's directly in front. Don't think the hair's long enough for Everly. He's coming in now. Let's take a check of the shot. Looks OK. I think it was Morrison. It's home. And the Borough breathe again. They reduce that margin to three goals. Morrison gets his first of the afternoon. And Alan Besley, I think it deserved a goal because it was a great mark. A great mark, and uh, he's one of the new recruits, Paul Morrison, coming from the Goulburn Valley, and he former played with uh, in his junior days at Tintinder up in the Mid-Murray Footy League. They're not a bad club, Paulsy. How to win, they tell me, Alan. <laughs> oh, a great club. Uh, the old Bezo, he loves that Swat Hill area. He knows every inch of blade of grass up there in uh, beautiful Swat Hill. And, of course, the uh, telecast this <laughs> afternoon coming to our viewers through Swat Hill, Bendigo areas. And, of course, the broadcast on 3CV, this famous simulcast, first ever for sport in central Victoria through 3CV, number one for sport in country Victoria. And it's going right through Bendigo, Ballarat, Castlemaine, Dalesford. In fact, uh, parts far and wide. In fact, we had a little last week from uh, people listening to us from Holland, would you believe? They heard the Mirabra Castlemaine preliminary final from Holland. Hard to believe, but there it is, as Eagle Hawk forced the ball forward now, and Slater's got the mark, and Slater's passed to the forward line, and that's the long hair of Everly, I reckon. Yes, it's Andrew Everly in the forward pocket, and I'll tell you what, Eagle Hawk are not giving this away by any stretch of the imagination. And when Slater puts foot to ball, it usually goes right onto the belly button, and that was the situation again as Everly lines up, 40 metres from goal. City end from the grandstand side, 45 oh, degree angle, kick. it's home, and Everly kicks his second of the day, and Johnny Forbes, did we speak too soon? I think we might have, might have shown, because Eagle Hawk have come back, and we can, if you want to 
the, uh, the point that Eagle Hawk got away was when Darby Munro got out the ball out of the centre on his own. The smallest and oldest man in their team, he went through a wall of defenders about five minutes ago and that kicked off the Eagle Hawk uh, run of goals. Richard Look, Jones checks the statewide building society scoreboard. Let's have a look at the scores. Uh, back to in, within two goals, the Hawks. Uh, Northern United 12 8 80, lead Eagle Hawk 10 8 68. And there's nothing in this game again. What a beauty, Shane. Nip and tuck grand final, uh, Jonesy, at the QEO. Two goals the difference. We've gone 19 minutes, third quarter. Ferring won the tab, only went as far as Hogan. His kick goes forward where Herrick picks up. He goes wide looking for Tricky. Half forward flank, out of sight of QEO. Falls over at the vital moment. But the ball beats him over the boundary line for a throw-in. Gee, there's not much in this game. No, there is not. And, uh, well, I'd say if, if Northern United get another goal uh, before the uh, time on period, Eagle Hawk could be struggling because Northern United will be going to the city end in the last quarter. Well, they got that four-goal break a few moments ago. I thought it was curtains for the Borough. Here come United again. Adlam comes out, smothers the ball. He's desperate down there. Best's got nine. He's trying to get rid of it. Best's appealing for the holding the ball, and well, he might have been because Adlam was lying in over the top. But I don't think Gary had too much chance that Two time. Two great old heads out there together, Shane. <laughs> and Best, he wanted to have the last save, but he didn't that time, uh, Bez. As we see the bounce, and oh, beautiful tap down from Ludeman, but only into the arms of McDougall. And Andrew McDougall now gets it across field where White, I should say Smith, goes toward Pangrazio. Gee, he's taking a long time to pick it up. In fact, he's beaten pointless. Great play, Hogan. Hogan's tackled then as Eagle Hawk come in through weight of numbers. It's a good desperate duel down there in the forward pocket for United. And they got us. Parker's wrong best on the goal line. It was a two hour duel against Adlam. And Best has got the grab. And he is on the goal line, kicking from the grandstand forward pocket to the Barnard Street end. Now, this is the most acute of angles on this ground, which many outsiders who come to the QEO, of course, say it's almost a square. Now the lead comes from Hogan back into the field of play. Best decides to give it to him, but the pass was a bad one. Oh, what a let-off for Eagle Hawk as Hogan now plays for the free kick. It's not forthcoming. In goes Mountjoy. Gets the hand pass across to Leo Demio. He has a snapshot for goal. It's gone high and long and wide and over the boundary line on the full. And the rain beginning to tumble down again at the QEO as we head for time on in the third quarter. Northern United 12-8-80, leading Eagle Hawk 10-8-68. The Borough have had 30 free kicks in this match to United 16. And after the clearing kick, it's Gary Mountjoy taking a beautiful grab over the top of Peter Rogerson. He elects for the short pass, which comes off. They didn't make too much ground there. And Sheldon's got the grab. Rogerson gave him a little bit high. Uh, Sheldon uh, staged it well, hoping, of course, to get 15 metres, which didn't come. And Sheldon, with the rain coming down at the QEO, is lining up 50 metres out right in front. A wobbly old kick landing in the goal square area. Wharton got his hands on the ball, couldn't take the mark. And out comes Darby Munro to clear. He'll go looking wide for Everly, who punches away from Hogan, who had front berth. But Gary Evans that time. And it's gone over the boundary line, a half forward flank for a throw in. Well, we've got a game and a half here. The grand final is evenly poised. United with the upper hand, leading 12 8 80 to 10 8 68. Ferring taps down to Rogerson. Tries to burst through and a great tackle, Gary Mountjoy. And Mountjoy's got the free kick against Peter Rogerson. So Mountjoy's got it in driving right now at the QEO. He kicks toward the forward pocket where Best's made the lead. Wharton's up two. They punch away. Tricky does the roving. He's got time to run into the open goal. A fire says offline. And they're the ones you shouldn't miss in a grand final. Darren Tricky misses very few goals, but that was one of them. The blonde-headed driver, former Maribara player, came into the North United Club last year looking for a game of football. And what an acquisition he's been. Stay he wide. could be the first rover in a grand final side and a premiership side all at once. Yeah, Major League grand final staring United in the face here. That's the prize for victory. Oh, Mountjoy has taken another glorious mark after the kick out there was a beauty over the top of pangrazio he gets it across to hogan hogan goes toward leo demio clears the pack wharton goes in as does brooks for eagle hawk gives out a bad hand pass lets tricky into the game he races away from andrew mcdougall gives it to wharton wharton to Mew. a goal must be it is yes a goal to the swallows and bad mistake there from andrew mcdougall who gave away the ball with a shocking hand pass and we're just about to approach time on, and it's 39.87, the Swallows, on the Statewide Building Society scoreboard. They lead Eagle Hawk 10.868, and that one, Alan, was a very valuable goal. Very, very lucky goal too, Shane, the way they handballed around. They messed it around in front of goal, but Big Dave Ludeman getting a, a quick snap off the left boot, 
and uh, getting back to their handy break now of uh, three goals one Northern United as we check the scoreboard for statewide 13-9-87 Eagle Hawk 10-8-66 yes it might have been Dave Ludeman I may have called Muir down there they're 35 and 36 and they're very similar looking players but in fact uh, we believe it was uh, David Muir who got the goal okay so Muir it was thanks indeed Jonesy and Muir's first of the afternoon coming at the 24 minute mark of the third term Pierce on and Robbie White off for Eagle Hawk that's a change that's just been made and after the bounce, we're going to see a Northern United free kick. The rain has just dampened the enthusiasm of the crowd here for a short time, but the shouts have been pretty intermittent through the day as that kick from Trevor Ludeman goes towards set a half forward. Big Dave Wharton, his move into the forward line's been a good one. Taps down now where Rod Lee kicks toward goal. It's bouncing, bouncing, but no, not this time. And Eagle Hawk bring it away through McIver, who kicks for touch in the old language. It's bouncing toward the boundary line. It's not going to go over. Mountjoy leads in the race for the ball. The Borough try and shovel it toward the boundary. Deliberate, says umpire Fletcher. It's against McIver. He can hold his head high. He was the only Eagle Hawk player having a go on that occasion. And it's going to be a United free kick to Ron Best. Too far out to score, puts it toward full forward. All oh, Holt! Holt's taken a great mark. John, that was a match winning mark. Holt's playing this match with a broken finger too, Shane, which makes that, uh, anything like that just about a uh, very painful exercise. I can it agree really with does. you there. <laughs> 25 minutes gone. He's out and about uh, 15 metres out from goal, drops it on his boot, and it sways away at the last moment through for a point. Not well, the best kick for goal of, uh, in, in the world, uh, Holt, is he? I mean, but he could have won that game out at Raywood against South Bendigo that day. Uh, they were uh, four points down, a goal from Holt would have won it, but uh, he kicked a point that day, and it's now Northern United 13 10 88, Eagle Hawk 10 8 68. And the rain tumbling down as Gary Adlam kicks in for Eagle Hawk in the fullback position. And it's a good long kick, too. He's looking down here for Morrison. He misses the mark. Eagle Hawk just slowing down at the stage of the grand final, to my mind. They're bringing the ball down the ground now. Mountjoy dives in on it. He couldn't pick up the slippery ball. It's shoveled out now by Ludeman. Eventually, a kick off the ground brings Eagle Hawk further forward. But I think Trevor Ludeman might get a free kick here for a nudge in the back. It's against Shane Dole. And we're going to see Trevor Ludeman take the result in free kick. Very steady, soaking rain coming over QEO at the moment. Grey clouds, very dark too. As the kick goes up towards set a half forward for the United side, O'Connell misses what he should have taken. In they go desperately now. Andrew McDougall can't pick up. It stacks on the mill, and we're going to see a ball up. Pretty close to siren time, and a very handy 20-point lead to United. And the Borough really do need a goal before the last break. There's the bounce. Tricky takes it out after a bad bounce. Got one too high. Must take the free kick. That's going to be Darren Tricky now to drive United forward. I believe they've got the upper hand. They got a four-goal break. The Borough got back again within two. But now United have increased the lead again through the mercurial efforts of Ron Best, who's got nine and could have had ten if he hadn't been unselfish there a few moments ago. Kick goes long. Punch down to where Hogan picks up. Hogan has a long shot for goal, but he's well offline on this occasion, and it's one point only to the Swallows side. They go to 13, 11, 89, 27 minutes gone, third term. Eagle Hawk 10, 8, 68, and Gary Adlam preparing to kick out. He decides to go long with the torpedo, looking for Morrison, has the ball punched away. Pangrazio sharks. He goes looking for Christie. Muir misses out, it's on the ground, getting a little bit slippery out there. Tricky goes in too for the Northern United side. And umpire says, give it to me and I'll ball up. Simulcast coming to you through 3CV and TV8, right through Central and Northern Victoria. And it's been a nip and tuck Bendigo grand final as the tap down goes toward Rogerson. Rogerson goes toward half forward. Trevor Ludeman gives away a free kick for a push in the back. That was silly. And Shane Dole's going to take it. The Borough need a goal. Where's Gilmore? Hasn't led as yet. He says, put it long and put it high. They go toward Christie, who misses what he should have taken. Muir's too clever. Taps it out in the direction of Fife, who leads in the race for the ball. Gilmore comes in and tackles well, but Fife gets it to Neiman. Well played as the United defence bring it away again. Mountjoy tried to accept the pass. It slipped from his hands, and it's gone over the boundary line for a throw-in. Yes, interesting there. Scotty Neiman looks like uh, he's got a roving commission or he's somewhere across the half-back line. Uh, David Muir was in the forward line for his, for his time, but Leo Demio is definitely in the forward line. Paul Brooks is his man at the moment. There goes Derby. He played a fair game too, Shane. Leo Demio has done a good job up forward this quarter, James. Yeah, I agree word. with you there as uh, Trevor Ludeman's going to try and bring it away from United. The game slowed noticeably in the last five minutes. Eagle Hawk need a goal. Evil picks up, gives a hand pass to Rogers, and he wasn't ready. It's taken now by Dave Ludeman, who puts it high, but Morrison's going to come in here. Ford drops the mark. The ball must have got very greasy in this last few minutes as Fering tries to give it to Pangrazio. Mistakes galore now. 
Rogerson dives in on top of the ball, appeals for the free kick, it's not forthcoming, and we're going to see a ball up. Wing position out of side, and the Borough down by uh, 21 points in the grand final. Into time on in the third quarter. Free kick, Tally Jonesy. Uh, free kicks at the stage of the game from Brendan. Eagle Hawk 30, North United 21. Eagle Hawk coming into attack now. It's picked up by Everly. He hooks it over his shoulder. Looking down further forward for Brooks or uh, his forward teammates there. But it's United leading in the race for the ball. And Craig Neiman brings it away. And he gives it across here to Leo Demio. Leo Demio on to Tricky as good football. And Tricky's going to go back, I think, and decide to kick over towards centre half forward. Where well, he's got teammates galore unmarked. And Leon Holt's got the mark now. Our best saying, kick it long. We've got Leo Demio on his own in the forward pocket. And Holt spotted him too. And Demio must mark this. He has. Yes, it's been paid. And uh, I spotted that, I think, uh, about 20 seconds before a Borough player saw a bad defence by Eagle Hawk, John. I think Lion Freddy could have seen that one, Charlie. Thanks, was, John. Uh, <laughs> 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 but I was just noticing back here before, that I think Eagle Hawk are playing a loose man in defence because uh, David Muir or David Ludeman are wandering, is wandering around uh, the half-back line. In, in comes Hulk. Leo. Leo now. There's a point. Well, uh, that was a let-off for the Borough. Boy, oh boy, if he kicked that one, it would have been a danger for them. Northern United 13 12 90. Eagle Hawk uh, 10 8 68. And gee whiz, the Borough have stopped to a walk in this last uh, few minutes. I think United have really taken ascendancy as they mark again after the kick out. Cartledge will give away 15 metres here too shortly if he's not careful. Mountjoy took that mark. I don't think he'll have a shot for goal, will he? No, he decides he's too far out, puts the slipper into it, and drops a good 15 metres short. It's three-quarter time at Bendigo's Queen Elizabeth Oval on Grand Final Day, 1984. And the scoreboard, Northern United, 13-12-90. Eagle Hawk, 10-8-68. So three-quarter time from the Queen Elizabeth Oval. It's dark, and it's a gloomy situation for the Borough. I don't know what Fairing can do. I believe United have taken the ascendancy. Best has got nine goals. And United, I think, are smelling a flag. What we'll do is take a break from the Queen Elizabeth Oval and come back and summarise this game and preview what looks like being a pretty exciting last quarter shortly. Hi again, and of course, uh, nine goals at uh, full forward from Ron Best. What a performance by the old maestro. Yes, four goals in that third term, and there's the siren to get the last quarter of the Bendigo Football League grand final underway. 22 points the difference. Can the Borough come back? Can United hold on to create history here this afternoon and win their first ever Major League Grand Final? They're kicking to the city end in the last quarter. I believe they're going the better. And here's Holt breaking away and having a long shot for goal after the first bounce. But it's uh, well offline and is out of bounds on the full. Out of bounds on the full, that kick from... Uh, Leon Holt, so that would have been a very handy start for the Swallows. Ferring decides to take the kick. He looks for Rogerson, couldn't find that player. And they go now as Rogerson finally picks up and kicks toward the outer side wing position. Evilly, eyes on the ball, couldn't take the mark. Took a bad bounce and uh, favoured uh, Evans. And Evans picks up now and drives back towards centre half forward where Holt's made good position. Couldn't take the mark that time. Andrew McDougall goes in. He misses out. Brooks now holds onto the ball too long but gets a hand pass across to the running Rogerson. And the Borough now need goals quickly as Rogerson goes down toward that wing position. But it's Muir going up to take a good mark. Good player, this Muir, Jonesy. No, I think that's David Ludeman, uh, Shane, over there. We'll just have a look from the kicking action. Uh, yes, it is, David Ludeman. Right, thanks indeed. And Ludeman, a good, strong mark there. And here's a great mark from Leo Demio at half forward in front of big Jeff Fairing and O'Connell. That's, uh, that gives you an idea what a good mark it was from Leo Demio. He kicks to full forward where Best leads. And uh, they penalise Gary Adlam here. Well, I thought he punched the ball away fairly well. A little bit stiff, Johnny, or do you think it was fair? I think he was stiff, uh, Shane. I think Gary Adlam will be having nightmares about Ron Best for the, about the next six months, but uh, like with anyone on the ground on him, he'll still do what he's doing. He's such a brilliant footballer. Now, Best has got the opportunity 45 metres out on the Melbourne scoreboard side of the ground. And uh, tell you what, this will be number 10, and it might just be the nail on the Borough coffin. He's kicking to the city end. He's been dynamite on accuracy this afternoon. This time, no, wrong side of the post. And that's unusual for Ron Bess. 13, 13 to 10, 8. How would you be sleeping tonight, Bezzo, if you were Gary Adler? Oh, I think I'd be sleeping comfortably. It's a pretty hard, any task of uh, playing against Ron Best in the grand final. Probably his last game of his great career. Yes, it's been a great performance. Nine goals he's got. And the situation here is that it's 13, 13, 91 to 10, 8, 68. Uh, Richard James will give us the winners of the raffle shortly. But uh, Northern United storm forward again. And there he is again. Ron Best again is marked, and he is uh, 50 metres out. No, that's being a little bit uh, 
generous. I'd say only 40 to 45. He's directly in front this time. The pass came across well. Best had read the ball. He'd let out well. And he's got the chance now from right in front to kick goal number 10. There's no mistake that time. The Moran and Gold flags are waving. I don't want to preempt anything, Swallow supporters, but I reckon you can get the corks off those champagne bottles very shortly as you race away now to a lead of 29 points. Well, Corksy, you know the way up to Raywood. What's the celebration going to be like up there tonight? Well, I think the length of them will be the thing, Alan. I think they'll go for about six months because the first major <laughs> league premiership for Raywood and district and the, the small uh, community up there, they want to look like they're on their way to winning a major league football grand final, I think all the experts said could never happen. Well, what's the population of the town up there for people who don't know the little area? No, it's about 150 and 200 if you count the kiddies, I think, uh, Alan. <laughs> There's not many, There's, uh, but it encompasses the Camarooga and Raywood districts. That's the team. Statewide Building Society scoreboard, five minutes last quarter. United have really assumed the sentence since half time. They're 14 13 97. They can smell a flag, the Swallows. Eagle Hawk at 10 8 68 as United storm forward again. Chance now for Rod Lee to burst in. He gets it across to Leo Demio. Leo Demio tries a fresh air shot, comes back to Lee. He kicks under severe pressure. And well done, Robbie White, who saved what would have been a certain goal, coming in there with a very, very strong tackle indeed. And one point only. Statewide Building Society scoreboard check. 14-14 to 10 goals, 8. As Adelham kicks out, he's looking for Rogers. And oh, Rogers takes a gutsy mark at centre-half back in front of both Trevor Lederman and Gary Mountjoy. That was a good mark from Rogers. And 15 minutes, uh, 15 metres, I should say, against Mountjoy for wasting time. Christie leads well at half-forward, drops a sitter. Bad play, Christie, who's really done nothing since he came on. United able to bring it away again. Sheldon onto Evans. Ball slippery. Evans having trouble picking up. Doubles back, gets around Morrison. Well done, the speedster. Then loses possession as Big Christie follows up. Good effort that time, Christie, to follow the ball down the ground. His kick goes toward half-forward. Must be a United free kick, though. It's going to be, and it's going to be taken by Muir. Muir's got the ball, half back, had trouble identifying he and Dave Ludeman today, they're very similar. He goes toward Herrick Grandstand wing, he misses the ball, O'Connell's got the show. Darby Munro leads into the pocket, got the pace to get out and get the ball. Terry Ademio bearing down, in comes Fife as well. Gilmore's last man there gets legged and must take a free kick. And Daryl Gilmore's got it now in the forward pocket on the Grandstand side, kicking to the Barnard Street end. There's five goals the difference in the grand final. There's five minutes gone in the last quarter and Daryl Gilmore shooting for his third of the day. He's been beaten by five, comprehensively in my opinion. He's 45 metres from goal on a pretty acute angle. But he's usually a pretty deadly kick of the ball. This one's just across the face, however. Just when the Borough needed one. And it's one point to Eagle Hawk. 10-9 plays 14-14. What's your prognostications, Mr. Besley? I can't find so Tony Southcombe. Oh dear, yes, he's, he's on the bench. He's, he's on, on the bench. bench. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's still there in his tracksuit, Alan. He's uh, looking very carefully with runner Rod Brown at the, at the trend of play. Uh, Richard, I think John Malcoyne will be standing in a knee of cigarette butts at this stage of the game too, I think. Yes, Ten, probably will. 10-9 plays, 14-14. That's the statewide building society scoreboard as United bring the ball down the ground quickly. It goes to Mountjoy. He runs through the wing, goes to half forward and kicks long, looking for best. Two out duel, best decides to punch to the ground. Demio, oh, well played Cartledge because Demio was in if he got his hands on the ball, but Cartledge dispossessed him well and drove to where Pangrazio's got the mark at half back. Might be 15 right. metres here against young Neiman too. Pangrazio decides to go on quickly. Finds Slater right in the centre. He gets away now, decides to play on. Races away from Tricky. And also Muir drives towards centre half forward. Ball's punched away, comes to the ground. Gutsy effort there from the Borough as they burst through and try to bring it away by Munro. But it's taken now for Northern United's Trevor Ludeman. He gets it across field. Well played Ludeman as he gets it now to Tricky. It's right in the centre. Ferring's in there for the Borough. He can't pick up. Stacks on the mill. Umpire may go for a ball up here. A crowd of about 10 around the ball. But umpire Johnny Flitch has pulled out a free kick to Brett Shelton by the looks of things. He's down to take it for 25, no, 29 points Leo! in the grand final. And Leo Demio accepts the pass. He gets it on to Herrick. Yeah. Herrick took too long. Oh, got away. Two players. Well done. Goes to full forward. Best couldn't take that one, surely. He was caught right under the ball. And Brooks is going to take it. Brooks goes toward the centre, looking for Dave Ludeman. He misses out, taken by Darby Munro, good player on this quarter. He finds Gilmore, who may have been moved out to centre half forward. He hand passes to Dole. Dole goes for home and misses a sitter. He was 40 metres out right in front, and G. Eaglehawk needed a goal there. My word, that would have got them back into the game, but that was a costly, and that could be the uh, telling factor with about eight minutes gone in the final quarter of this grand final with the statewide scoreboard reading Northern United 14 14 to Eaglehawk 10 goals 9.
There's the kick out now from Peter Fife. They're just changing that board. Allen to 10 10, I think, will make it. 70 to 98. 28 points the difference. The Murray getting a second win as Dole marks and plays on after the kick out. Drives toward goal. Well offline, though. Bounces over the boundary line for a throw in. Deep forward pocket. Out of sight of QEO. Barnard Street end. There's been a big crowd here at this Bendigo Football League Grand Final. I think the league will be thrilled with the gate. Had they had a dry day, I reckon they might have nearly doubled it. Christie gets front berth for the throw in, then drops the ball after he could have taken it on his chest. Slater goes in, he can't pick up. Pierce is in there too. Now Dovey Munro playing a good last quarter, dives in, might get a free kick. No, a player Fletcher says, give it to me. I'm going to ball up. Around right about 50 metres out from the Eagle Hawk goal. Yes, uh, well, it looks as though Eagle Hawk is uh, struggling at the moment, Shane. They desperately needed that goal from Shane Dole. It's strange that he should have been offline so much in this final series. I've got him down for 2-2 two -two for today, but uh, he had a shocking day that, uh, in, in the first or the second week of the finals when he kicked six points. Rogerson takes it now after United four raid forward. Rogerson kicks toward the half-forward line for the Borough, but out comes Muir. He's in my better players today. His kick's a bad one, though, only as far as Brooks, and Brooks sends the ball back from Wentz and Kane. Nearly a good mark to Neiman in front. In fact, up by Johnny Fletcher's blown the whistle and said it's yours, uh, young Neiman. Good mark, that one. Gets the lead here from Leo Demio. Gee, played a good second half. He gets the hand pass to the running Tricky, and Tricky goes wide. He's looking down here for Hogan, who's got front stalls. Hogan gets the hand pass across further afield now toward uh, Lee, and Lee can go toward Best. Instead, he goes inboard. Brooks lost the run of the ball. They're in trouble there, the Borough, but got out of it as the kick came out toward Cartledge. Back pocket now, grandstand side, City End. Cartledge having all sorts of trouble picking up. It's eventually shoveled on to Ninger O'Connell. And he's well shepherded for by Pangrazio and kicks the very wet ball down here looking for Gilmore. Oh, and Gilmore's taken a great mark there. He's certainly been moved out from full forward as Darrell Gilmore. Now decides to play on, gets himself into all sorts of trouble. Eventually has to handball. Ports on to between Terry Demio and Gilmore. And uh, I think it's only a friendly play fight though as Eagle Hawk try to bring it up forward now they've got the chance as Everly goes in Morrison and Gilmore in there too Gilmore a little bit slow gets a nudge no free kick goes to Munro Oslade has made good position in the forward pocket he'll go further forward looking for Christie Christie hasn't got the pace or the skill fights too steady too strong and clears up here to where Terry Demio goes up he couldn't take the mark it's desperate hard slogging wet weather football now and it's 14 14 to 10 goals 10 that should be on the statewide building society score board Tony South come hand to head hoping 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 that this uh, Swallows side can hold on and to my mind they're doing it well enough it's 10 minutes gone last quarter Fearing taps down to Gilmore he goes forward looking for Dole or Christie but underneath the ball is Darren Tricky to take a good mark I'd like to take this opportunity too to apologize to TV8 viewers and 3CV listeners for a slight break in transmission during the third quarter the uh, problem is beyond our control as Northern United 4A forward again. Hogan kicks long to best. He was caught behind Adlam that time. And Adlam charges out of defence and turns defence into attack as he drives toward a half forward now. Morrison races in for the Borough. Has he got anyone to go to? He could have gone to Slater on the goal square. The kick was not long enough. And Fife marks in front. Target the other side. Good mark, Fife. He's been a steady player today too. Has not given Gilmore a look in. As he goes toward Leo Demio, out of sight, improved player this year, Demio. And of course, those two Demio boys will be playing for their brother, who was tragically killed in a car accident earlier in the year. But I'm sure that's going to be a great thrill for the Demio family, Johnny, if this uh, United side can take out this flag this afternoon. Certainly will be, Sean. The Demio family is right in the heart of Kamaruga. That's uh, deep in the heart of Northern United Country Territory. Yes, one gold eye and one maroon eye, those Demio boys, as the throw in takes place. Fairing taps down. Tell you what, this uh, grand final's beginning just to die out a little. I don't think Eagle Hawk are doing enough to get back into it at the moment. They need a couple of quick goals to spark them back to life, but United are doing it well. I reckon they've nearly got the grand final one as Wharton taps down evenly. Sharks well. He gets it across field to Munro having a great last quarter. He kicks forward looking for Slater, who's caught out of position again, and Demio's got the mark. Now, Jones, you had a little bit of information to give us earlier. I think we'll fly through that now. Right, uh, Shane, will the... Uh family ticket draw, the, the grand final draw, which was the big uh, one, uh, goes to Doug Gibbs, who's won a week for two at the Paradise Centre in Surfers Paradise, and he flies there with Ansett, and I think it's uh, Roger Thompson. George Thompson. George Thompson from Raywood. Uh, George Thompson from Raywood's won the dishwasher. Well, well right. has he? He's got to clean all the jumpers tonight. He'll be yes, to. jump because Best has just picked up in the forward line, and Best has kicked the goal. 
a handy did it like a rover did Ronnie Best. Number 11. And that's two in the last quarter. That's six since half time. 11 for the day. And came out into open spaces. Lee had the chance to drive from the forward flank. He drove toward full forward where Best dodged around Adlam. Tucked the ball under the arm, said, I'm going to kick another one, and did he do it with style? And Ronnie Best has proven himself today, I believe, the greatest full forward ever seen in country football. Yes, 11 goals to Ron Best, the league champion, and Northern United, 15-14 to Eagle Hawk, 10 goals, 9 on the statewide building society scoreboard. And I'd say it's good night, the Borough. United have got this flag one here. They're doing everything right as Mountjoy picks up in the centre, gets it across to Neiman. That was one Scott Neiman who goes forward to Sheldon. Oh, Eagle Hawk have stopped, and Sheldon can do what he likes as he drives towards full forward. Leo Demio had the show. The Borough desperate in defence as O'Connell charges him. He's not giving up yet. He drives down looking for Pangrazio. And Pangrazio's taken the good mark in front of Scott Neiman. Pangrazio decides to go on with the job. He looks down here for Slater. It looks like he might be playing at centre half forward. Oh, Dole gave for Demio a nice one there. As Demio cleared down towards Scott Neiman again. It's in the centre. Sheldon looks a tired player. He picks up the ball now, hand passes to Mountjoy. Mountjoy goes for the underground hand pass to Craig Neiman, who eventually gets it away from McDougall, gets it further afield to Evans. Evans loves kicking goals, kicks it toward the grand, uh, the uh, goal square area. Would have been a grand effort there from Best if he could have marked that one. He was right under the ball, and Gary Adlam able to clear away this time. And he goes toward that outer side wing position. Evans in again first. He picks up and puts a beautiful pass to Wharton. No one near Wharton. He can go short to Hogan if he likes. Decides to go to Demio instead. Demio's beaten by Cartledge. Good Eagle Hawk defence. And we'll see a ball up forward pocket on the outer side to the city end. With 15-14 playing 10 goals, 10 the scoreline. And United sailing onto a grand final victory. 14 minutes gone last quarter. And I'll tell you what, the Moronan golds are very, very close now. I'm sure they're not uh, counting their chickens. But I'll tell you what, any decent judge would be able to see that they have got complete control of this game at the moment. And Eagle Hawk now just playing our time as United sail onto their first ever Major League flag. It's in the forward line area for Northern United. Leo Demio picks up or tackled as he decided he was going to have a shot for goal. Borough don't know what to do. They force it to the boundary. Might be deliberate. No umpire says throw it in. And I'll tell you what, Jonesy, I reckon they've got this one. Yes, indeed. That was uh, Robert McIver who had nowhere to go uh, as he went towards the boundary line and the umpire throws it back into play again. Big Fairing's been quiet in the last half. Yes, hasn't done too much since half-time as Big Jeff. I think he's been too worried about how his side's going. And it's pretty well been one-way traffic since half-time. There's an interesting incident. It went over the boundary line. An Eagle Hawk player in Cartledge came in and decided to give it a roost over the Melbourne scoreboard for those who know the QEO. And that's down in the forward pocket on the outer side of the city end. And he's been penalised for it as Cartledge. Undisciplined play. And we're going to see a free kick go Northern United's way. The Northern United bench are looking uh, hopeful. Still a little worried, though they have no 